fly. All righty. Let me, I think I got a ding there. Let's see if I can refresh and find it. <clears throat> Phone's doing something up here. Let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, no, oh, that's my post. Is it st I don't think it started yet. Oh, yeah, here it is. Okay. Yeah. Right. Do we need to take notes? Well, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a full video of the whole thing if you wanna. Oh, okay. You wanna go back and watch it? You'd be one of three people probably that watches the whole thing. All if right, I see all of our faces now on Facebook. I've got to turn the volume off of it. It'll be real confusing here. Since my... <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, there's like a 20 second delay. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny. So you have to turn off the, if you go over to Facebook, you have to turn the sound off because it'll mess you up. Seriously. All but right, Michael's so not that. starting his not starting his video yet. He must have mm -hmm. walked off. So um, I w I've just seen that Willie Nelson is is going to air on um, at three thirty on Saturday one of the classic picnic Willie Nelson picnics. So that oh, should really? be interesting. I don't know which one or or anything. I just saw it on the, in the email. So that'll be fun. Here's Sam. joining us okay so let me get back over here and then i'll invite i'll, I'll be invite, right back i posted posted this on facebook today and invited everybody and their brother <laughs> and then i sent well, out email. i tell you what you did a good job we're getting a lot of people <laughs> and i have I, have, I, I have somehow screwed up and i've lost most too many buttons but I'm well, you're making a lot of noise and Somebody is. I'm Somebody. done with it. I'm done with it. So if Just you're not me. if you're not talking, mute your mute your audio. <laughs> yep. That'll help. I what only I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. Is that right? Then there oh. look like three more that are coming up. Let's see. Well, there's one, two. I see ten pictures and three that are just names, and that's uh, Angela, Deborah, and Sam. There's there's thirteen uh, listed yep. there. Some of some of them are just dark pictures. Yeah, they, they haven't shown up yet. I must have I must have have the box checked that if you don't show your name, your your picture don't come up. I've I've seen that before. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, everyone's asked to start their video. Some people just don't, you know, they they just want to sit there and listen. Yeah. That's fine. Ange Angela has asked if, if it's okay if she keeps her video off. So That's fine. It is. Um, I'm eating dessert, so you'll get my picture once I finish dessert. <laughs> All right. Well, now let's see. Okay, I'm eating okay. chips. Here You're going to go. see it. Here it is. There's a share button. All right. I'm going to well, invite a bunch of people now again through our watch party and so you may get an invitation to the watch party too I and see if it. you want to do if you want to go there and share from your page get on the watch party and share to your friends i can only share to my friends so if everybody wants to share to somebody else then that would be great and that way brad will have a lot of people to hear his good things he's saying yeah i can't wait mm. How you doing, Michael? I'm doing good. You gonna M you gonna MC this thing tonight? Yeah, that's okay. A, that's, what, that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah, you're the boss. No problem. So, uh, so Barbie, how do we get on Facebook and Zoom at the same time? Well, you you'll have to go to a a separate. You can't from your phone. Okay, okay, okay. You'll have to go to. That's what I thought. Telephone. But I'm on my computer, so I just went to a separate window in Safari. Sure. Gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> so if you tag me on the watch party, will my friend see it? I don't think so. I think that okay. you will be invited 
but you have to tag your friends or something like that. Uh, okay. I'm not really, I'm not an expert on this. Yeah, just, you, you have to share okay. something. Like that. I just, I just come and I start the watch party and invite a bunch of people. Well, all right, can, let me get on, let me get on the watch party. You can have your own watch party, right? Yes, wow. you can create yeah. your own watch party. You just you go, go to, to the Facebook, Facebook page. All right, hang on. Dallas Songwriters page. All right, let me go there. Let me go there first. Mm -hmm. I don't move as fast as you, you Dallas people. Okay, I'm on the Dallas Songwriters. Wayne takes offense hey. to that. Huh? Wayne <laughs> takes offense to those Dallas people. Oh, I. <laughs> wow. I see us now. Troublemaker. Okay, so be I look sure green. You're, be sure your the audio is turned off on the Facebook. I used page to live on the north edge or, of White Rock Lake, but let's see. How do I turn off the audio? Let's see here. All there's right. There's there's a little button in the right left. Okay, uh, it's left. off, and now oh, I nice. share. Yeah. See, you see, right underneath it says watch watch together with friends or with a group. Start, and that's the right. watch party. Huh. Got a little popcorn icon. It just turned off. Darn it. <laughs> There's Alan. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm using my little uh, tablet this time so I can be lazy and sit on the couch. <laughs> I think we got a bunch of listeners tonight. And that's or watchers. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're welcome to on we'll Zoom or on Facebook. Either either one. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I was watching on Facebook for a minute or two. If I get really lazy and we'll just go over to Facebook. Mm -hmm. Well, we we'll kinda of wait till seven o'clock before we kick things off. Give everybody plenty of time to get on. Anybody know okay. anything exciting? Uh -huh. <laughs> We need to wait till Brad signs on. Yeah. And I hope that's not a problem. I got an email earlier that he's in town and he'll join us shortly before seven and ask that we send a new link. Oh, well, am I supposed to send that? I think Harry just did. I sent him one. Okay, all right. Uh, I think I told Bobby I, I would, I forgot. I told times, but you're all too busy with this. Yeah. At any rate, yeah. I sent the email. Harry did send him a fresh link, so okay. I can do this. Yeah, the most exciting uh, news I heard of was Don Wall's trip. That was pretty darn exciting. Yeah, we all live vicariously. Yeah, we live Don vicariously trip. from Don Wall. <laughs> <laughs> and Michael's pool in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. Y'all didn't like my trip to Lubbock? Well, you didn't tell us much about it. Tell us about it. There wasn't much to tell, talk about. Well, <laughs> there you go. And we don't know what to like. <laughs> Saw a bunch of windmills. That's pretty neat. Yeah. Ron is the only person. Oh, they have a ton of them them. out there, don't they? Yeah, they think those windmills are generating electricity or something. When I was a little kid, nearly every windmill had a uh, an electric generator on it. Did y'all know that? They would they they had a little ba uh, batteries that the windmill would charge. They could yep. rig them up and have a little. I don't know. Maybe they ran their milk separators or something with it. I don't know what they did, but they had them. Had them. Well, I can't get the share the thing so they can watch the Grand Ole Opry. Maybe that's what it was. <laughs> well, the so, only exciting thing here is I have most of the tornado mess cleaned up now. My next adventure is I'm getting two roofs replaced. Wow. But I think we should just call that roofies because it's like they're all drunk out there and I can't get anybody over here. You, you My know. insurance company is like, we're waiting, we're waiting. And I'm going, okay. Um, I'm getting a new roof right now too. You know, is it taking that. forever? Actually, no, It's it's been pretty smooth so far, but we're just getting started. We just... Just this week, okay. um, and so you know, went through the inspection and all that stuff, and got everything approved. Right, right now, the next thing is I've got to wait for the, the homeowners association has to approve the color of my shingle. Oh boy! Uh, well, 
I'm getting and, and getting the most generic color there is. There's right. I, there there shouldn't be. You know, homeowners associations take forever for everything, and they get really hard to term pissy about things. But I'm I'm getting this as as generic a roof as you can get to go in this neighborhood. I'm planning on getting out of this place. <laughs> okay. Now I, I retired last Harry? year. I want to. I want to go. I want to. I want to go somewhere else. I don't need all this. I don't. It's just me. I don't need three thousand square feet. Wow. I got you. Guess not. Where do you live? Benbrook. <laughs> Benbrook. Southwest Fort Worth. You, I've I've been there many times. Many times. <laughs> But you didn't even stop by. Yeah. I probably passed you on the street. It's possible I'm easy <laughs> to ignore. You what lived a long way from away from Lakewood. Mm-hmm. It's about uh I went over to uh uh Dorinda's brother who just passed a couple months ago. And I went over to uh, his house. He and his, oh, his whole family's there. Uh, and I, I I checked on the odometer, and from where I am to, and that's uh, oh, right off like PV, uh, right there at the north edge of White Rock Lake. Yeah, it's, and it's Buckner 60, and, and Lake Highlands uh, Drive and, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, like 63 miles from my door to theirs. Yeah. <laughs> A good way. Uh, Wayne, you said somebody, Drinda, you said? Dorinda. Dorinda Duncan. Dor Dorinda, okay. Remember Dorinda Duncan? I don't think Gigi knew her. I think I met her at one of y'all's meet, at one of y'all's events. You did, uh, uh, you did, uh, Jerry Alice. She, she and Bobby spoke at one of our meetings a while back. So you probably met her. It's not her that that passed away is it no no no, no. Brother, uh, it brother was her brother oh, okay and and to briefly tell the story dorinda and i were in a relationship for about five years back in the 90s and uh but she and and bobby are dear friends of mine i saw them uh, about a, a few months ago when they were here and i've been to yeah. their place in uh in north carolina too so okay we're, yeah, she seemed real nice. Oh, she is, and, yeah. and it's even though we're we're not together, but we we were always friends before. We're friends now. We're we're musical siblings, and and they're kind of family to me. Oh yeah. You were working as an a, uh, agent for a while, right? You had an agency. Is that, is that yeah? Right? Boy, that was a long. Yes, I was. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, Harry, I need to tell you that Alexis, uh, I sent you uh, the entry for Alexis Tap. She's entering a song called Lord, I Can See the Mountain for tonight. Let you know that. I also sent another one a, a little while ago. You're on, Alexis. Oh, I didn't uh -huh. know that. Okay. Uh, I sent one to Harry uh, that I had paid for last month. but Okay, good. Yeah. All right, so I'm seeing, let's see, somebody's answering back here. Greetings from Germany. We're hearing from Bernard Grohl from Germany. Great. Uh, Bernard. Bernard. Midnight over here, he says, so I hope uh, they'll let me travel to Texas this October. <laughs> Have fun tonight, <laughs> Bernard. I wish we could get him on here, too. Uh, so, oh, so, I thought you meant he was getting on. No, I don't think so. He's not. Um, maybe he's going to watch on Facebook or something. But um, we uh, we need to get him on to our open mic. Yeah, I'm Saturday. The, the midnight open mic we're going to do or whatever. But Saturday open mic would be great if we could have a little open mic afterwards or something. I'm going to forward this on to, to you, Harry, so you'll have his uh, info. Okay. So, Pitt, Germany. We like old Bernard. 
I don't, you know, uh, Broadway is canceled until 2021. Uh, and uh, I, I heard yesterday that the Austin, uh, uh, Austin uh, Music Festival, what's it called? Uh, Austin City, Austin City Limits U U Music Festival is canceled in September. They're not going to have it. So already things are being canceled in September. Hello. All my stuff got canceled for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. Hell, I canceled their his concert there in Austin. Who did? Who did you s Alexis, the yeah. that file you sent me, these hands does not work. It's a, there's an error. Holy cow! Which the one that I sent from my phone? I don't know how you sent it, but you sent it by email. It was not. It didn't work. I'll try again, Harry. Oh my goodness. I've had enough technology loops today to last me a lifetime. So nobody has any live gigs right now. How about you, Ricky G? Well, I have one in August that's still on a uh, winery up in uh, North Texas, up beyond McKinney. And, uh, uh, Blake Shelton's Old Red's Doghouse asked me for some uh, July and August dates, but of course that's Oklahoma and they have a complete different uh, ball game. So we played up there about uh, two weeks ago. I remember that. Well, our yeah. governor, you know, has shut down the bars again. Um, mm -hmm. If you're, if you're, they're not serving food and just serving liquor. Um, Okay, so Ron McCowan is asking me, and then you know we 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 have to wear face masks now as of to, as of today when you go out. Um, that's a that's a rule. Yes. Yep. Uh, yep. State today. or from Dallas? The, the whole state. state. The state. Texas. Any, well, if you have twenty, if you have twenty yes. cases in your area, you don't have to. I had to wear right. mine to pick up my guitar at Charlie's yesterday. I, I was the only one in there had had to wear a mask. I, I went in there and there's everyone standing around that didn't have a mask on. They were friends, you know, and stuff like that. And I walked back there to get mine. And that that guy that works for with Bryant back there, he said, "Put your mask on. You can't come back here." So I put Good my mask God. on and uh, paid him my ninety bucks or whatever it was. Well, did you should have got a discount. I cracked my guitar. I, I was zooming, I, and I had that D eighteen, and I knocked it over. I didn't think it cracked it, but it got a crack and uh, so i'm not going to zoom with that anymore I'm just, i got my cheap ones i'm going to zoom with the cheap guitars because i knock them over can't afford to break them yeah it's hard to beat a good old plywood guitar yeah the governor <laughs> said effective midnight tonight everybody's got to wear a mask unless you're in a county of less than 20 cases and then he said the local authorities will have have the ability to limit groups to no more than 10 you know that's so that's going to depend on your area what's the jail time for not wearing a mask 250 dollars <laughs> fine by the state yeah that ought to be interesting <laughs> yeah you. if you can't arrest somebody for pulling down an entire statue i don't know how successful they're no, I don't know how prosecuting this stuff <laughs> It just doesn't make people think a little harder, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's good. So, Harry, I sent you both through Dropbox email and um, your and your Gmail. Okay. Just now you did? Yes. Okay. What are you sending? Is it a complete song or a song idea or what? It's a complete song. It's. Uh, <laughs> it was supposed to be coming from my uh, computer yeah. sound system, but uh, Harry and I could never make anything work today, so I sent it from my phone. Oh, okay. Oh, it's okay. just uh, recorded from my phone. So. Okay. Okay, you sent me an M. Uh, okay. Well, I'll probably work my it's an M4A or MA4. Yeah, or I, I think that, that'll work probably. Yeah. P probably. So is anybody uh, invited to send a song or what's going on with that? It cost you $10. Oh, 
Ten dollar. Yes. You get your pro review. We're, That's scary. I gotta pay ten dollars to get beat up. Oh no. <laughs> Where's Joe Milton? Mama, this picture. They should pay us ten dollars to beat us That's up. That's right, Mama. That's right. Somebody <laughs> needs to remind Joe Milton. Bobby, hey, why you? Hey you guys, see? I'm uh, talking to Brad on the other line right now. He's having problems with his camera on his laptop, but he's going to zoom in on his uh, cell phone. Mm -hmm. He's got to go to his Los Angeles telephone number to do that. So he's in the process of doing that right now. Okay. And uh, and I have him on the phone. He's told me to hang on the phone until he got back. Yeah, we, won't get, we won't get okay. started until he gets on. M Michael, why don't you text Joe? Text okay. Joe Milton. Mm -hmm. Um, Remind him. So he's going to give a little bit of coaching this evening. Is that part? I think that's what I saw. He's he's supposed to be an expert. Well, we got to have experts, darn it. We need some. <laughs> it's so crazy in the music business right now. I mean, I was paying about half of my bills through the music business up until the Ides of March. <laughs> <laughs> that was my last gig. I was like, yeah. is that significant or just a coincidence? You know? <laughs> like I was saying, right now I am between cancellations because I had a whole bunch of gigs in Colorado for yeah. mid-June that got canceled. And I got a whole bunch of gigs for mid-July that got canceled in Michigan and Carolina and Virginia. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. So, I'm, this is nationwide. It's not just around here. Oh, no. No, it is nationwide. And uh, oh, man. the funny thing is, one of, one of my gigs in, in, in Virginia is still on, but it's virtual. Oh. And, and I log into there thing and and do my whole video production from home and uh and people are paying money to watch the show and they're tipping really well and i'm going to get paid probably better than if i'd gone and That's i don't awesome. have to travel I, without no the traveling. overhead <laughs> with no overhead hey should we should we admit some guy named brad wants to be admitted <laughs> that's our speaker better okay. let him in Oh, and and I don't know if you you know uh, the the she's gonna she probably sh I should be warming up for her probably, but the uh, the other artist on the bill I think it's July seventeenth is uh, Grace Pettis. Oh yeah, we love you. Grace. We've seen her at Wildflower a bunch. She's good. So, yeah, I got a follower. Hey Brad, we got you, but you're sideways. <laughs> okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We lost him. Uh, see no, him. I see him. He's you on, see him? He's still sideways though. <laughs> still working still on right. the audio. Brad's iPhone. That makes me want to tilt my head. He's got it sideways, yeah. There we go. There he is. All right. All right. Ta da. Ta da. We're gonna spotlight Brad. Right. Okay, Brad, you're right in the middle of the screen now. Oh uh -huh. okay, there we go. Okay. He's fantastic. Facebook <clears throat> should be good. Can you guys? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You're looking at. I don't. I don't see any. Of you guys. No, normally, I'll see the Hollywood Squares, but I don't see it this time. No big deal. No big deal. We do Zoom a lot, but the laptop lost its camera today, of all things. So. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So Michael, why don't you uh, introduce our speaker? Yeah, well, I, I want to get started with just a little news update, some folks that, uh, some changes that have been happening. Um, we're doing our Zoom open mics every Wednesday now. We're not doing, we're not doing uh, the Thursday Dunn Brothers or the Wednesday opening bell, but we're Zooming every Wednesday with Harry. All right. 79, open mic. And of course, we have the spotlight on Saturday from 12 to 2. Um, so, be aware of that and try to, try to get on on Wednesdays. Um, uh, you know, there are a few things that are still up in the air. 
next month's meeting, which is supposed to be the the uh, pool party and you know, summer party at Joe Milton's. I guess uh, it's still kind of up in the air as, as to whether we're going to have that or what, how many people we're going to get to attend. But keep it on your calendar for now. We have it set for all the things. Uh, let's see. City line. We've got a we've got a um, spot on, at City Line on August 29th at this point. If that that happens, but it's outdoors, so it's a good chance that may still happen. And then one where's that? Say that again. City Line. It's in Richardson. It's a big outdoor uh, area with there's restaurants nearby. You know, around it. What are y'all jamming there? Or is it just well, it's a, event, more, or? A spot, more of a spotlight. We'll have a, you know, four or five, six people do 30 minutes in or something like that. Okay. Um, State Fair of Texas, we still don't know for sure if that's going to be going on, but they're going to make an announcement on that in, in September. When is City Line again? Uh, the first one was August 29th. I think these are all Saturday dates. Is that right? This Saturday. The other two is... Thursday or Thursday dates. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, you were still making plans to have the Hall of Fame uh, at Sons of Herman. And of course, we're going to kind of play that by ear as well. Um, we are not going to have a booth at the guitar show this year, which is at, at the end of uh, July, first part of August. We decided not to have, have the booth there. Um, Let's see. So Harry, you might mute, mute everybody except for Michael right now, so we can. Anyway, that's that's kind of the media things that are coming up. Have I left out anything? Any any anything else? Well, we're going to do, do the deep Ellum thing. That's all. Yeah. Oh, deep Ellum. I guess that's still on as far as we know. That's as far as we know. As far as we know, that's uh. Deep Ellum is September 4th and 5th. Uh, that's just another to be determined. Although, you know, I don't know how that that uh, edict by the governor. If you're going to have more than 10. I can't hear Michael. You can't hear me? Now I can think. Okay. I mean, it sounds like the governor says that if the local local authorities want to limit uh, gatherings to, to no more than 10 people, they can do that. So I don't know what that holds for Dallas County or the city of Dallas. So we'll have to see about that. So um, other than that, everything's going great. <laughs> right? Everybody's having fun. Um, well, we'll get right to Brad Davis. We're very, I've been very excited to hear, hear, hear you, hear from you, Brad. Brad is a, uh, he's a producer, engineer, session musician, recording artist. I mean, this guy does it all. <laughs> and, uh, let me put some light on this thing so I can see what I'm doing. Whoop, whoop, whoop. See if I can read this in the dim light. Uh, dang, I want that do anything. He's an aspiring guitar player too. Yeah, he's an aspiring guitar player. Uh, no, he has um, just recently, at least last summer, his August August uh, 2019 tour. He opened for Billy Bob Thornton. Everybody knows who Billy Bob Thornton is in the Boxmasters, his group. Spent five years with Warner Brothers, his recording artist, uh, with the Forrester Sisters. Eleven years with Marty Stewart. Two years with Sugar Hill, recording artist, Sweethearts of the Rodeo. Six years with uh, Columbia artist Earl Scruggs. Everybody knows Earl Scruggs. Two years with the uh, recording artist Sam Bush of Sugar Hill. And he's a full-time member and partner for the Vanguard uh, Recording 
record company, I guess, the, the Boxmasters. Plus, he's played for Willie Nelson. And plus, he also produces our own Ricky Jean Wright. So, <laughs> the guy's a busy, busy man. So, I'm glad we have him here tonight. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Brad Davis. I appreciate that. Uh, some of those titles kind of hurt, as you as you said. I'm a lot. Of, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, a lot of a lot of memories. <laughs> good. A lot of good ones, and some of them, uh, some of them were painful, but they they were good. I learned a lot yeah. all through those years. Of course, I'm only seeing you. I don't see the rest of the guys like I would normally do. Uh, oh, we're looking. We're look, I'm looking for Brad right now, so I can turn him on. Here we go. Yeah, I want to see Brad. And I'm not sure. You know, normally, when we do so, we've got the whole Hollywood Squares, but, uh, <laughs> we, got but about, I know, we got about 20 people here. I know we're I know we're limping tonight here at the studio. My laptop, uh, its tongue was hanging out. I think last week. So, hey, Brad, uh, we're streaming to Facebook, so we have a lot of people watching us on Facebook, and then we have gotcha. uh, around 20 people on Zoom. Gotcha. Well, it's uh, it's great to be here and. Uh, I uh, really appreciate you guys asking me to be part of this. Um, I think it, it kind of got started uh, when Bobby and I had, had some conversation about the industry. Now things have recently changed. For all of us independent artists, things are more positive than they've ever been. So um, it's it's a it's a really neat thing to kind of I dive in the trenches. I'm still full time. We're seven days a week here at the studio producing mainly out of Nashville and LA. And we do take some local clients because we have two different studios here. So we do it every day. Um, I do try to take Saturdays and Sundays off if I can, I try to. Um, but uh, the studio I'm in right now is a copy of uh, Slash, built a studio in Los Angeles and Billy Bob Thornton bought that studio. And I engineered there as one of the band guys uh, for about three or four years. And, uh, staying at Billy's house because I didn't want to move to LA, couldn't afford to. And I replicated that studio here. So that's where I'm at right now, um, where I work every day. And uh, I've got a great place to work five miles from the house and no traffic. So, mm -hmm. uh, but, but pretty much inside the trenches of the industry daily. Um, I'm an artist as well. Uh, so I also produce artists and I work closely with PLA Media in Nashville. Pam Lewis. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her. She discovered Garth Brooks and a uh, really talented lady has a lot of, a lot of irons in the fire, uh, but they develop new artists as well. And um, anyway, I, I think the, the thing to kick off with is, I mean, are there any questions? I've got some things I want to talk about uh, that might be helpful to you guys uh, right now in this present state of the industry. Uh, but I want to stop and just say, are there, you know, anything that I'm not going to address right off the bat and miss if I don't stop for a second and just ask that question from anybody that's uh, on our Zoom meeting. Sure. Is there anything in particular that that you want to try to address today? And, and I've got, like I said, I've got a lot of stuff to talk about today, but I just want to throw that out there at the gallery. Good. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with some questions. Yeah, if there's not any, you know, I'll, I'll move into kind of how I'm testing out some artists and how they are being so successful right now with no label and no financial backing. Uh, and I'm testing the same thing out on myself with regards to the Louisiana Hayride record label that I'm signed to. Um, it gives me a chance to kind of know what's going on in the industry and uh, what's happening, what's changing. Uh, you guys obviously know that royalties have completely dropped to, to almost nothing, uh, mechanicals and regular royalties. Years ago, um, I was a staff writer in Nashville. Uh, I hold my own publishing now, uh, and then I do co-write with different writers, but I, I'm not full-time with, with a company right now because I'm able to hang on to it. But years ago, when you got a song, as, uh, or a song into a publisher and you wanted to get a writing deal with a publisher, they would say, we want 30% of your royalties and 10% of your mechanicals. Never would talk about the master ownership. Uh, that's all changed now. The master ownership is key and that's where all financial revenue is made. Uh, and that's the reason maybe some of you have seen some of the singles that we released through Louisiana Hayride record label. They've been covers. They've been 
popular kits that have into the millions and millions and millions of fans that follow those songs. And, and the reason I picked those out is what we're trying to do is we're trying to develop uh, a concept, a protocol of taking what's available for us out there, which is Spotify, uh, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Deezer, uh, the list goes on of the social media things we have, uh, Vimeo, YouTube, uh, many others. But taking those avenues uh, and that, that protocol strict, strictly by bypassing radio, which radio now, according to Sony, and according to the industry, radio now is Spotify. Uh, and I know it's disturbing. I love vinyl. I love tape. I used to cut tape at Kitty Wells Studio when I, when I first got to Nashville. Um, so I love, um, I love old technology. But Spotify is our radio now. That's our radio, and that's what we need to focus on. Um, the main thing about focusing on these outlets is, is are we prepared to be there? Um, are we are we capable uh, in a very simple setting, maybe a closet or a room in our house with a small, small software and a small interface? Nothing big, nothing fancy, like all the stuff we have here at the studio. Very small two channel or one channel interface. Are we prepared to create a broadcast quality black and white demo? And I'm going to explain a little bit about that. If we're not prepared to produce that then we don't want to go these avenues through Spotify and we don't want to release anything to Instagram because we don't want it to hurt our reputation, uh, which is very important. Um, uh, we I released a record years ago on Louisiana Hayride actually it was on uh, mansion entertainment out of Nashville. And it was a tribute to George Jones, the guy that runs the label, his dad wrote for George Jones and asked me to do a tribute album. And Sony heard those mixes, Dwayne Brown with Sony, and basically gave us the pat on the back or the accreditation that I love what you guys do. It's great. Keep doing what you're doing, whatever you're doing. You know, you're doing it. Broadcast quality, love it. So if anybody out there is listening can, can say, yes, I think I can produce a broadcast quality final product. What is that? That's taking your song, whether it be guitar, vocal, piano vocal, or maybe bass guitar vocal, or maybe piano, bass, and guitar and vocal. You see, I'm just adding the configuration slightly bigger, or drums, rhythm guitar, electric guitar, bass and vocal, just different configurations of black and white demos. And black and white demos are, are not fully elaborately produced demos. Um, and I got to stop for a second. You guys have any questions, stop me, but I got to stop myself right there and tell you that every demo I do in this studio for myself or anybody else has to be master quality. Even though it's a demo, it's got to be master quality. And what does that mean? That means the guitar is in tune, incredibly in tune, bass is in tune. Everything is totally in tune and on the money, but we're not going to play to, we're not going to quantize anything. We're going to get a drum machine that has a good feel but it floats on the click. So the click would be right at the middle and that would be quantized. The drum machines we use here, Premier Drummer, they float around that click. And the reason they do is because they're real players recorded on this drum machine. So we want to use something that has some breathing room and some life. And so we'll use a drum machine like that for our click track to prepare the demo and start working on it. But we'll also use that click track to basically allow us to have an end drum. If we want to have a drum, maybe a kick and a brush or a kick and a rim shot and a snare, that particular drum track that was our clip track is going to be our final drum track if we're going to do maybe a four piece with a vocal on it. So the idea is, is staying simple, staying simple as, as possible using a one or two channel input interface. And there's many, many out there, Art, Focusrite, Steinberger, Behringer, Scarlet. Some of you may have some of those at home. But using a good sounding mic pre, and those are not that expensive. Our mic pre is right here. You can see my hand pointing here. It's API, Neve. These are in the $1,000, $2,000. They get up pretty high. And the reason why we go for that kind of quality is 
I've got to compete with record labels here at the studio. And I want Sony to always look at what we're doing. Now, can I get that good of sound on a, a less expensive mic pre? And the question is, sometimes you can, depending on what microphone you use. The microphone that's the best microphone for the money. It's a large diaphragm microphone. It's great for acoustic guitar. It's great for upright bass, mandolin, fiddle, vocal, fantastic for vocal, banjo. It's great for a lot of different instruments. And it's called the, a, the AT4040. And it's this mic right here. It's a large diaphragm microphone, fan power, $288. And that's the cheapest microphone I have at the studio right now. Every mic that I have, great quality, goes from 1000 and on up. But this particular microphone is a go-to microphone for me because I'll have these expensive microphones and I'll continue to go back to this AT4040 because the AT4040 sounds amazing. Great for vocals, great for so many different things. Would I put it on a guitar amp and turn the amp up? No, I wouldn't because the capsule's fragile. It's a large diaphragm microphone. If I was going to do that, I'd use a 57 you know, sure 57 or a ribbon mic for that. And uh, one of the new ribbon mics, but this particular mic sounds amazing. And if you're using an inexpensive mic pre interface USB to your computer, then you could use one of the art focus, right? Steinberger or Behringer or Scarlett. One of those that would basically provide you a great sound with that particular microphone. Uh, it, we know once you've got a good chain of flow into whatever you're recording on, could be your, your computer, which, you know, you may want to, you may use Pro Tools. I don't know if anybody listening at, at the, the Dallas Songwriting Association uses Pro Tools. You may use GarageBand or you may use Studio One or you may use Logic, whatever that particular software is. The reason I'm, I stress a little bit on the software, it needs to be simple. It needs to be easy. It doesn't need to be tough and, and take a lot of your time away from you. But if you've got a good editing capability on your software, like on the software behind me on the session I'm working on right now, if I take this particular session and I broaden my channel here, let me see if I can get that in the, in the screen for us. Am I over there? There I am. Yeah, let me open this up. I've got a lot of editing capabilities and, and I don't want to bore anybody here, but the thing that is you, this alleviates any excuse not to have a great sounding broadcast master demo. If you can see on your wave file and you can edit, you can make the most basic guitar player sound like a professional because you've got the editing capabilities to do it. And if you've got the editing capabilities to do it, you don't have to be a great guitar player. You don't have to be a great singer. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what's going on with the industry. I'm talking a little bit about production right now. And you want to have a guitar that's in tune. Your bass needs to be in tune. You need to make sure you lock in with the groove. If the groove's got a great feel, just lock your guitar into it. Don't be busy. Don't be fancy. Be simple, solid, lay down a good groove. Even if the solo section is you may be playing three notes inside the chord instead of playing a lot of notes. Uh, I know that's a little weird coming from me. They nicknamed me the Shredder in Nashville because I play a lot of notes at times. I drink a lot of coffee, okay? So it happens. But uh, the thing is to be musical, you want to be simple. And you guys are familiar with Chris Stapleton's uh, uh, past release of Tennessee Whiskey how simple that track is. If, if anybody knows that track that's listening in Zoom, it's the most basic drum track in the world. It's the most basic bass track in the world and guitar track and rhythm guitar track, extremely simple. And that's what you wanna keep, keep with. You wanna create a demo that, that doesn't have a lot of elaborate, uh, elaborate turnarounds. You wanna have things that are simple and solid because we're selling the song basically. So, well, that being said, uh, production is, is comp just absolutely key. You want to make sure you get the best, but you keep it simple. That's what I call black and white demos. Um, uh, several, several of the big wigs at BMI, uh, and I talked about that, that if you have a black and white demo and it sounds like a master, in other words, great quality, everything's in tune, the groove is great, 
the vocal may not be a great singer, but everything is in tune with that vocal. Nothing's out of tune. Everything sounds in tune and has a good feel to the key. Then you're basically going to have a great shot at getting this song either listened by somebody or picked up. And that's, that's what we're after. So creating, you know, great, simple broadcast demos are great. And you want to, a lot of times people have a problem saying, well, how do I, how do I know how loud that's got to be? Okay. If I'm producing a project, I produced Tommy Shaw's record, uh, his solo record several years back. And so as I'm mixing this record, I'm trying to figure out how am I going to make sure I get this right? And it was a little bit of a will the circle being broken album. Well, I got some of Nitty Gritty Dirt Band's Will the Circle Be Unbroken cuts, and I referenced those cuts. I put those into my system and listened to those and got my ears tuned into the bass. How loud is the bass? How loud is the guitar? How loud is the vocal? Is it bright? Is it mid-rangey? Is it bassy? You know, just going with those three concepts of bass, mid-range, and, and, and high-end, I was able to basically put Tommy's record up Tommy Shaw's record up and make sure that I go, you know, this is pretty darn close. The bass feels about right. So I would reference. So with that being said, I used to do a lot of recordings while I was with Marty Stewart uh, in hotel rooms with a small two channel interface made by Focusrite and my laptop. That's all I had. And I had a good mic. I had an AT4040 and I, I would bring a desktop mic stand and a pair of headphones and I would record in between uh, vacuum cleaners next door as they would be cleaning hotel rooms. But I was able to get some great recordings. I recorded for film scores. I recorded for records. I did parts for other people. And basically, I had a great mic. I had a good mic pre. And I made sure all, all of my signal going into the system was, was very, as excellent as I can make it. Not perfect, but excellent. So also, if something was off, I would slide it. I'd grab my editing software, and I would slide that over, and I would make it feel great you know if i didn't have time to recut it again so it's so important to think about that and, and when you're doing your broadcast master you want to make sure how do i make that loud like we talked about earlier you got a reference even if i got headphones on and i'm in a hotel room in billings montana and i reference at a low low level if you reference with headphones on you need to be half a unity gain unity gain is straight up on the console at what they call zero which is not zero here but it's here, zero unity gain. Many of y'all probably know that, just in case you don't. And unity gain, you would go about half. So you would come down about half the level of nominal level in headphones. Because what happens in headphones is you're encased in a headphone and you're covered. So the low end is accentuated, which is really dangerous when you're trying to reference records. So you have to really turn it down when you're wearing headphones. And you listen to the reference, and you listen to it again and again and again and again, and you pick something that basically fits what you're all about as an artist. In other words, Brad Davis, I would pick a Tommy Emanuel recording. I would pick, um, I would pick, a, you know, a bluegrass recording by Tony Rice. I would, you know, I would pick recordings that basically were part of my DNA. And and I would go, I like that way that sounds. I like the way that sounds. Maybe four or five different artists. Eric Clapton especially on the electric, because I do a lot of electric too as well. So I would pick things that would, would fit in with my DNA and I would reference those. And I, if it was an electric one, I'd use the, I'd use the, uh, you know, the electric version. Or if I was referencing acoustic, I'd use the acoustic. And I would just make sure my levels were the same with those. And one thing to consider is what you're referencing on is a mastered copy. Inside Pro Tools, inside my software, I'm not mastered. I'm unmastered. I'm doing a final mix, but I want to try to get it within if the if the reference is here mastered. I want to try to get it pretty close, but I don't want to get here because once I master mine, mine will be here and it'll look like a two by four. It won't have a lot of life to it. I, I don't like to compress things really hard. Uh, a lot of the engineers that I've had an opportunity to learn from wanted things to breathe a little. You don't want to just crush it and compress the heck out of it. Um, so anyway, getting that broadcast master is essential. A lot of times, if you guys are Mac users, I know Windows also has iTunes, uh, Windows Media Player. You can throw five of your favorite artists in there, throw your song in there, and listen to see how does it, how does it match up. Is it as loud as the original? 
Is it less intense? And you got to consider that once you realize your mix is good, you're going to master that particular audio to get it to that broadcast master level. And so I'm going to stop for a second and you guys can just jump in if you've got a question. To get it to that broadcast master level, a lot of times people use mastering softwares. We do here at the studio. We use Ozone 7 and 8, and it's a fantastic software. And you may not have it. A lot of y'all may not have that. How do we do that without a great software like that? Well, inside your channel, inside this particular session I've got, I've got a master output. So every software that's out there, GarageBand, Studio One, Logic, Pro Tools, Nuendo, Audacity, the list goes on. They have a master out. And that master out will have a left and a right. And that left and a right can be treated as a master output. Uh, I had a guy that built Sound Emporium in Nashville. Dave Cinco showed me how to do that. And what you have to do, think about it this way. You need a compressor. And the compressor needs to not move a lot. In other words, the compressor, if you've got a needle on a compressor old school and that, that guitar is hitting it and really squishing it, bringing it way over, you want to make sure that that particular compressor is not squishing the the uh, the audio and normally on a stereo mix you're going to go 2.1 2.1 on your threshold and if you'll do a 2.1 on your threshold it'll basically give you a great great setup for uh for doing a master with a compressor uh the bomb factory b76 is one of my favorite for a uh, basic channel compression inside of, of, of a session because it gives you not a lot of input, not a lot of output. You're gonna basically want the meter to just barely move, the light to barely move. If you're watching this compressor back here, you can see this light. And I don't, I don't know if you can see it really well with the phone, but yeah, one, two, hey, hey, hey. So that compressor is not compressing until I do this. Yeah, one, two, two, hey, 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 hey. The right side is bringing my volume down and squishing it. Yeah, one, two, two. Well, I don't want it to squish that much. I want to roll my input. Yeah, one, two, hey, hey. I want to barely come on right there. Yeah, one, two, three, four. So it depends on how your audio is, but you just don't want it to hit the compressor hard. Once you got the compressor compressor in place, then you may want to go with a stereo setting inside your compressor. There's a lot of softwares that have already preset stuff for you, okay? What you're going to want to do after that is below that compressor as your last thing going out okay you can stack these these uh, apps up a certain way compressor and then this is going to be a maximizer and what a maximizer is is basically a tool that allows you to put a ceiling on top of your mix you may want to write this down this is broadcast setting from sony okay sony broadcast setting would be negative 1.0 so what happens is you drop barely below the threshold of the ceiling. And so the, all the audio coming through your compressor hits that maximizer and the maximizer keeps you from going in the red and creating a, a clip or distortion. And those are the two tools that are very inexpensive. They're, they're with a lot of softwares and they'll help you master without having a fancy software called Ozone. Uh, and it works really, really well. Uh, Dave Cinco is a great engineer, um, worked with Garth Fundus for years in Nashville and, and has been a, a big a big influence on me. Um, but anyway, I, I want to pull back for just a second. I've got a couple of clients in Dallas um, and they use GarageBand, okay? And GarageBand, I took, I took basically this particular project because I wanted to face the challenge and see can we take a GarageBand record and throw it into Pro Tools? And can I create a broadcast quality record out of things that were recorded in GarageBand? These are guys that are not experienced at all. They, they did buy the, the AudioTech 4040, and I'm not really sure what mic pre they used, but they recorded in GarageBand. And what happened in GarageBand, if anybody's using that, it's a very common software, it's easy to use, it's really fun and fast. 
But what happens is when the audio goes into GarageBand at a level that looks good to you, it might be in the yellow and you don't want to go in the red. Obviously, we want to stay in the green and yellow's pushing that red, right? So we don't want to go into the red. But what happens on GarageBand is it automatically compresses your audio. We don't want that. We never want that. So what I've had to do with these two gentlemen that, that are writers, great writers, and uh, learning how to be audio engineers as we talk back and forth and trade files uh, is to record less than you would think you need to record. In other words, instead of going into the green and up into the yellow a little bit, they record below the green slightly. They keep it below that because when I get the file from them, the file is so loud that Pro Tools uh, doesn't deal with it well. And Pro Tools is industry standard. So what's happened with GarageBand is they compress the audio. So if you're recording GarageBand and you want to transfer, let's say you, you call me up and say, I'd love for you to put some guitar on this and some bass, Brad, and just mix it for me because I need it to sound as good as it can. Uh, then I would basically say, if you can record your levels slightly below the green, uh, don't go all the way up to what would be unity to top the green, but just go slowly below that, maybe four or five dB, and then send me the file. And then I'll be able to work with that file and make it sound bright, brilliant, a lot of life. Uh, but it took a little bit of testing to do that. If you're mixing inside of GarageBand, you're going to be fine, basically. It's going to compress the audio. So you're going to want to stay a little bit away from any of the audio applications that you can add on inside of GarageBand because the audio will already be, already be compressed. Um, and this has been a proven fact, so you need to pay attention to that. And some other softwares may do the same thing that are not professional, like, like Logic, Studio One, Pro Tools, New Windows, another one that's definitely professional. GarageBand, Audacity, Reaper, there's several out there that you really need to be careful about compression. Just be very careful about that. Um, once you've got a Broadcast Master product, something that you feel like matches up and you've tested it, then you want to get this thing out, right? That's what we want to do. So I've got an artist named Lady Redneck. She's fantastic. She looks like Lady Gaga, but she lives in Texas and there's already a Lady, there's already a lady Gaga, right? So I, I was joking one day and I said, why don't you call yourself Lady Redneck? Because, you know, you've got, you look great. You've got this great look going, but you're in Texas and call your band Texas Trash. I was totally kidding. Okay, well, several years later, uh, way up into the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of Facebook followers, she's doing really well as an independent artist. And uh, the reason she's doing really well is she works the internet two or three hours a day, which is tough for a lot of people to do that. But she also had a great, great concept. She had this image, she created she, she has a different name. Obviously, she's got a name like everybody else, but she created an image and she created basically an icon that she could load to Spotify, Instagram, Facebook. All of them have to match. In other words, with, my, with the label that I'm with, I have a website. I have uh, YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Diesel. There's a lot of new ones that I'm pretty new with, you know, that are brand new that happen every day. Facebook, obviously, uh, I mentioned YouTube. So you have, let's say, let's say you're in your seventies. And I just did this with a gentleman. He says, well, I don't really want to have anything out there. So we are trying to sell songs, right? Well, yeah, well create an image for yourself, create some kind of a photo that you think looks great. That'll be your branding icon. It could be a silhouette. Doesn't matter what it is, but we'll call it, you know, uh, Joe's songs, whatever. And so Joe makes this account on Spotify, artist account, okay, not the green one, but the blue one, artist account, and creates an account on Spotify. And basically, it's going to be his avenue out to the internet, but he's going to use a distribution company to do it. There are several out there. You guys may be familiar with many of these are CD Baby, TuneCore, um, Distro Kid, and several others that fall below that in popularity. The company that I was signed with, Louisiana Hayride, used CD Baby for a long time. Uh, and the reason why is it saved on staff inside the record label, and they could use CD Baby to facilitate getting everything out. You guys may be familiar with it. 
great program and a great uh, software platform to use. But DistroKid is the one that we switched to. And the reason we switched to DistroKid is DistroKid is about a thousand times more simple to operate and to upload. And also DistroKid somehow is connected seamlessly with Spotify. And I mentioned that earlier. Spotify is radio. DistroKid is connected to them very closely and we're not really sure, but when you upload a song on CD Baby, Spotify doesn't pop up that quick, but on DistroKid, Spotify pops up very quickly and they're linked together somehow more seamlessly. So that's a plus because Spotify is radio. So what I do, here's what here's the, the process we do. And we did this with Southern Gentleman, Lady Redneck, and the list goes on. We create our song, we get it broadcast mastered quality. We make sure we love it. We bounce an MP3 of it and a wave, two different ones. And we basically upload that up to DistroKid. And in order to upload to the internet nowadays using Spotify as radio, you have to have five to six weeks lead time, okay? So if you look on your calendar and you're gonna release for the 4th of July, you'd have to count back five weeks in the calendar. And what I do at the label with the label is we add another week on it because what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to release a week ahead of the 4th of July, let's say, as example. We'll recent, well, it, 4th, of Jam, example, uh, 4th of July is on the 4th. We're going to release the same day, the week ahead of time. Because if you release on the 4th, the 4th is over. It's already done. So we need to release a week ahead of time. And you need to back that up five weeks ahead. So five weeks to six weeks on every release needs to happen. And the reason why is when you release on DistroKid with your broadcast master final product, you've got to give all the online aggregators a chance to get your song to as many playlists as possible, because that's radio. That's what radio is right now. And playlist is available for everybody who has a cell phone and an iPad and a computer. So everybody that has those two, those three tools can access radio playlist, Spotify playlist, same thing. I'm just turning the two phrases in and out. And basically you're, you announce to DistroKid, I'm gonna release for 4th of July and you announce it six weeks ahead of time. And what happens when you announce it, DistroKid throws you an email. Some of y'all may use it. It tells you, let's go make this known on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Pinterest. Let's make it known. And so you basically put that out that, hey, my single is going to be coming out uh, a week ahead of 4th of July. And it's a song, blah, 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 whatever the song is. Uh, you know, and that song is basically going to be your single. So as soon as you release on DistroKid and DistroKid ties in your PayPal and your bank account and you want that on there because what's going to happen is you want to receive download money from the downloads of that song. Royalties are not worth that much now. Mechanicals are not worth that much, but the download revenue from master rep, master ownership is important. In other words, if one of you guys at Dallas Songwriting Association came to my studio and you recorded a cover, let's say you recorded Lee Greenwood's only in uh, God Bless America or God Bless the USA. You record it here. I've got evidence you have evidence that you paid and recorded that song at this studio you own that master now lee greenwood's estate and family will get royalties and distro kid will make sure they do that they'll make sure that the royalties go to the family and that the mechanicals go to the family and him and basically you own the master even though it's his song you own the master because you paid for it so you take that cover song and you release it to distro kid for the 4th of July, six weeks ahead of time to release the week prior to the date that the event is happening. I hope that all makes sense. It's a little- Wayne has a question. Do you mm -hmm. have a question, Wayne? Yeah. Uh, hi, Brad, Wayne Willingham. Hey, man, uh, what's up? Yeah. Well, all the usual, I'm hanging around here. Anyway, it, uh, it sounds like DistroKid does something to, uh, on covers then where you don't have to deal with the Harry Fox agency anymore. Bingo. 
they take care of that for you for twelve dollars they take care <laughs> of making sure the royalties get there and they take care of that uh yeah tune core didn't do that for me when i did one cover so and i had to handle it myself it wasn't a big deal but that's that's one less detail yeah Dist distro it. kid does it all they're great and, and the neat thing about it is you can split up team members in distro kid if you and i co-wrote a song I can put your information in my distro kid and every time that song that you and I wrote that we own the master on and we split, it's going to split that money up and deposit it in your account while you're snoozing at three o'clock in the morning. you got to love it. You can't argue with that. That's fantastic. But they deal with the Harry Fox agency for you on your behalf. You don't have to deal with it. So it's yeah, well, great. It's awesome. It sounds like DistroKid has has taken. I, I went with TuneCore when I started doing these things, and I've been satisfied with what they do, but I don't owe them any allegiance either. So, well, well so thank you for that. I know TuneCore really well. The guys with TuneCore and all my film, a uh, part of my film catalog, uh, I use TuneCore for. Okay, because they're tied into industry. Uh, in a back sort of way with uh, song pluggers and mm -hmm. uh, song manage uh, manage editors for films. And that's great. But TuneCore has a long process to get a song out. Distro Kid, it's like that. It's that fast. Um, I mean, they need four days, but they ask for four days, at least four days or five days. I mean, if you really want it out quick, they're going to say, gosh, give us a week because if we don't, we're not going to be able to do the right kind of job for you, but they're fantastic. And Philip, a good friend of mine, owns uh, DistroKid and, and, and was trying to get me to come over to DistroKid. And so I talked to the label and we ended up doing that and love it. Love DistroKid. It's fantastic. I would suggest fantastic. everybody to go to it. I own nothing of DistroKid. I have no stock or nothing. I just love it. So, so tell us about this. Uh, one more question while I got you. And that is that I know that I think it was last year or so. You were basically, instead of releasing an album, you were basically releasing singles in like succession, as I only, recall. Yeah, and only are singles. Are you gonna talk about that later? Yeah, oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. And that's what's basically made Lady Redneck so successful. And, and I wanna talk a little bit about that. I know someone had another question. I definitely will, I hit that, absolutely. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. So if you've got a broadcast uh, quality master uh, like I've got a Christmas song that's it's, it's a pretty good Christmas song. Everybody's heard it. Christmas toy. I mean it, it's it's anyway. So I own the mast. I own a, uh, own the song. So I, if I sign up with Distro Kid, then I submit that song to him. I guess sometime in, during the Christmas season, right? Yeah, you need it with Christmas. You're going to want to go a month ahead of time. Anything okay, big that, like that, you want yeah. to go a month ahead of time. So back up five weeks. But anyway, they're they're going to they're going to distribute it to Spotify and all these other places. They hit every every one of them, and uh, Spotify will be their main concern right off the bat. And right underneath the list will be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. It, they have them all. They they're connected to all of them. And, and if it starts, and if it starts getting airplay on Spotify or where, whatever these places are, I, I guess you get royalty payments if you get a million hits or something or ten million. <laughs> right, and we need to talk about this as in master ownership download revenue. Royalties are royalties, uh, and 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 technically it's a royalty. It is, but yeah. but if we think about it, in the fact that we own the master. And we're going to make money on that. And, and if you're talking about a Christmas song, which is a great deal. Holiday stuff is fantastic. You guys are familiar with Grandma Got Ran Over by a Reindeer. Right. Okay. That song has made him trillions of dollars over the years. Now, royalties have fallen in the hole. But that song is still downloaded endlessly on, uh, uh, on Spotify list right now. Anything uh -huh. that's Christmas you want, that's a fantastic way to make a yearly turnover revenue that comes back every year uh and you want those people to play those songs the problem with doing original and i want to talk about this for a minute yeah if you do an original I'm, i write all the time guys i write daily and and have always bucked the the cover song thing okay joel katz is a friend of mine he's one of the most powerful attorneys in the business he signed casey musgraves james brown willie nelson the list goes on and on and on of the people he's worked with. And a story he told me 
really hit home and, and kind of made my brain to start think about changing some things that I did that would help to improve what I do. He said, Willie Nelson, when Willie Nelson was first getting signed as an artist, Willie Nelson came to his father's birthday party in New York. He said, why don't you come to my father's birthday party? He just signed Willie. They're just now working together. Joel's a new attorney. He just has done James Brown's so had a little credibility. They went to New York for a birthday party. Willie's playing his original material. And, and, and Joel's dad said, could you ask him to leave? His stuff is horrible. We hate it. It's awful. Uh, they didn't like his material at all. So Joel said, man, I, this is awful. I just signed this guy. Could you play some covers? So he played the songs that were on the Stardust record. And you guys are probably familiar with those. He played those covers. Well, everybody in the room knew those songs, obviously, because they're covers. And that was the idea for Joel to talk Willie into covering, uh, to cutting a cover record called Stardust with all of those covers that he played at the party. And that was the record that launched him. And Joel Katz said, had we not launched originals, it would have taken us 10 to 20 to 30 times longer to launch his career because his originals were unknown. So the idea here, and we're doing this with a record label right now, even though I write songs daily, we're taking covers that uh, Valentine's Day, for instance, the record label we released, My Endless Love by don't laugh it's it, it was an acoustic bluegrass version of it uh so it's kind of entertaining but my endless love by diana ross and lionel richie the most played song for valentine's day ever in the history of music the most played so we thought let's cut let's do a brad davis version of that can you do your own yeah i think i might be able to so i learned it recut the song and guess what i own the master i own the master to the most popular Valentine's song ever played in the history of music. Well, they'll get the royalties. Distro Kid will make sure the royalties go to the right place. But I make the money on the master download because I own the master. That's better than my original song. And I got to tell you guys, the data showed it. Uh, my original material may have like 10 or 15 downloads. This instantly had 178 right off the bat with no no work. So what, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is as you think about the new industry that's going on, this is a year plan ahead, okay? January is right around the corner. In other words, to release for January, you've got to back up six weeks, right? So think about that. Obviously, you can catch Christmas coming up as well. But let's look at next year. Uh, this is the way the record label, the independent labels look at it right now. We've got January through December. And we're going to release five weeks, five weeks, and five weeks. And the reason we're going to do that is to give the, the aggregators a chance to get your song on a playlist. With your song's original, how, what's the chances of your song getting on a playlist, being original? No one's going to know you. No one's going to know your song. No one's going to even know to look for it unless it's got subject matter that ties into an anniversary or a famous dead person that there's a celebration every year about or an event. Or Those Christmas. Are the, or, well, Christmas is definitely an event <laughs> or, you know, or Thanksgiving or Fourth of July or, you know, you know what I'm saying? But if you release a cover song that's multi-million dollar platinum popular, your, your work is going to be this much as opposed to this much for an original. So what you do, here's the idea, is we did this with Lady Redneck. You start a year ahead of time and you release a cover and a cover and a cover and you campaign that entire year with covers that you like that you cut your own version of broadcast master you release them you own the masters they're out there forever and if they're well known the aggregators will get them on a playlist way faster many more playlists because of their popularity the next year that comes around then you start releasing a cover and an original a cover and an original and you get the idea so you start to infiltrate your originals in with those covers. And the, the next year after that, you do all cover, uh, all originals. Yeah. And it's a, well, it's a really great, I know it's a long-term plan, but it works. Well, one, one, one issue that uh, for me and maybe some others in, in Dow songwriters, of course, Dow songwriters include, includes a lot of people, including performers, but a lot of the people in Dallas songwriters like myself, are not performers. I mean, we perform out, you know, 
but we're not like you know <laughs> young uh hip uh, 20 year olds trying to <clears throat> a career so you know a lot of our songs are original songs that we'd like to get out so what avenues are work best for that situation? Well, that's that's the reason I'm bringing this up. John Jorgensen. John Jorgensen's 63 now. Still out there touring. You go like, you know, I'm not a 20-year-old anymore. He's still out there doing it. Yeah, we've um, heard of John Jorgensen. I mean, he's got a name. But um, let's go right. name. Right. right, he's got some backing. And, and me as well, not so much as John. I mean, I'm 57. I've been doing this a long time, and I'm still doing it. The neat thing about it that I love I, is I, I, I'm not going to name this guy's name because it wouldn't be fair. But he's 70 years old and he writes material, original material. And so what he's done is he's created um, a songwriter icon profile. He's, he said, you know, what am I going to call myself? I'm going to call myself uh, uh, the hot cigar, whatever, you know. And so the hot cigar is his icon. And he's got a silhouette of himself with a cowboy hat on. The guy's 70. Remember that. So he puts that on Spotify, and what he does is he's created an icon to represent his songs as an original writer and any cover material that he decides to, to produce. Obviously, the cover material is only to garner more fans to listen to your original material, right? That's all it's for. So he's got an icon. Uh, he's got it out on, uh, on Spotify, and he releases his songs every five weeks all through the year. He didn't want to do covers. He's doing originals. And it'll take him a lot longer to build that fan base. But nonetheless, he's in his 70s. And he, does he have to tour and play any gigs? No, he didn't want to. He didn't feel like he's adequate enough to do that. But he's recorded some very simple demos with just guitar vocal. And those are out. And he releases all through the year, five every five weeks. And uh, you know he'll pick a date in the month and make that the date that it'll release. Or... What we do with my label that I'm on is we pick a holiday. We pick holidays throughout the year and we tie a song to that holiday. Because if it's tied to a holiday, you have a better chance of getting your original heard or even, even a cover song heard. Right. Uh, but that's the avenue that's neat about Spotify is you almost can hide behind your, your icon or what you want people to know you as as a writer. Right. You can hide behind that. You can go, you know, I'm 80 years old. I can't get out there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Create a cool icon, come up with a name, release your material. No one will have any idea you're 80 years old. They'll go like, I really like this guy's stuff. This is awesome. And they have no idea the guy's fishing. He's retired and he's on a, on a boat in Florida. You know, you just don't know. Spotify gives us that opportunity. Um, uh, it's branding. It's, it's branding. It's right. It's totally branding. And you can do it at any age. I, another gentleman that came in, his first name's Howard. I won't say his last name. He's 78. Wrote a song about his family. Wanted to get it out there. Brad, Brad I just don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm, heck, I'm 78 years old. You know, and just really talking about all the negatives about it. And I said, you know, if you create some kind of an icon, what do you like? I like Cuban cigars. Great. Come up. Let's come up with something. I kind of helped him, you know, because he needed some help. He didn't know computer stuff real well. But I helped him kind of come up with a rough idea. His granddaughter finished it. She developed it. And now he's on, on Spotify at 78, putting his original songs on there. I mean, it's pretty incredible. We've got that opportunity. Radio doesn't want to see Brad Davis at 57. Radio doesn't want to see anybody, you know, less like if they're wearing a belt buckle that shines and they're 20 years old or 25 years old. But Spotify gives us the opportunity to brand ourselves at any age. It doesn't matter what age we're at. So we're so in a new era, guys. So yeah. Spotify really, really caters to the to the to to the artists, whether they be young or old. You yes, know, it's artist based. In, in and my, don't think, yeah, don't case, think for a minute it's all hip hop. Don't think for a minute it's all EDM, electric dance music. It's everything. It's everything. Yeah. So in, in my case, you know, songs I've I've. Uh, Many of the songs I've I've had recorded were recorded by others. Like the Christmas song has been recorded by a, was recorded by a female. Now I could record the thing myself as a male because I have I have male words and female words for this song. It's, it's interesting how that works. Which is real smart. 
So it would, it would it be better for me to record the song from the male point of view rather than release the female version of the song? I, I would answer that question by this. Every time I wrote a song yesterday with a gentleman, we were on our way to Oklahoma to do some work, uh, production work, and I wrote a song with him. It fits me to a T. Many of them don't that I write don't fit me, but it, it fits me to a T. But what, what am I going to do? I'm going to create several stems for that song. And that's what I do a lot of film scoring. So we call those stems and a stem is just another version. And as I roll into this, just give me a second to explain on the stem and pro tools, I've got a, a layer of tracks, right? And that layer of tracks would be my version, my male vocal version. Well, I can easily copy another layer inside that session, use the same tracks and maybe I may have to retune something or recut something. If I bring a lady in to sing it, and tweak the vocals a little bit and do a female version, which gives me my second stem of that song. And these may be slightly produced with uh, a four piece band. And then someone says, God, I love that song. I'd love to hear it piano and vocal. Use the same session. That's why it's so great to use softwares like this, create another layer and cut it with piano and a vocal and release another version of it. In other words, the more you have to release the more that you're going to generate on that song. So you want to cut as many stems as you can, even an instrumental. In other words, if you've got a song uh, that's got an instrumental lyric on it, then you could take an instrument like a guitar or some other instrument and play that melody and release an instrumental version of it. Because film scores, and I'm going to get into that really quickly, film scores use instrumentals uh, nine out of ten times more than they would a vocal. And mm -hmm. television as well, because dialogue won't allow for, for you know, verbiage and vocals to be on a, on a, on a track. They mm -hmm. want an instrumental to be underneath that dialogue. Dialogue placement pays great. And it's something, it's something that you all should be aware about. If you're writing stuff, you should sign up to this particular, you know, we're going to talk about these to sign up for. Uh, that'll help you find another avenue out of your song. You know. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, what's the uh, download master revenue rate? Uh, it is eight zeros point four. Eight. Wow. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, uh, writer's royalties is eight zeros point four. Re revenue rate on master uh, downloads is zero zero point four. You see the difference in the math there. <laughs> it's quite a bit. So, so it's four, can't, four one hundredths of a cent. It's zero zero uh, zero point <laughs> zero four, and and rider royalties are eight, oh, eight wait. zeros point zero four. <laughs> okay. So you see, a, there's a big difference here. Right. You right, said right. zero point zero four. Yeah. So that what, what what's happening? I mean, the the figure. I'm not sure exactly. I have to call my publisher and, and ask him exactly what the figure is. But that was the example that he gave me. Here's the difference. Rider royalties, that many zeros, 0 0.04, and download ownership is 0 0.04. So it's, it's a huge difference in numbers and amount. And <clears throat> Cody Johnson, a Texas artist, you guys may be familiar with him. That's how he built his business. Uh, and his business built into the millions based on these master uh, download revenue streams. So big that a good friend of mine at Warner Brothers gave me the inside story that they wanted to sign him to a label uh, at Warner Brothers, to their, one of their internal labels. And Cody said, why should I do that? I'm making six million a year playing shows and selling merch and with this master download on Spotify. And they said, well, they wanted a piece of that, obviously. And so they offered him 10 million to sign and he had a lot of leverage there because he was already already making a lot of money. So he ended up with a really good deal with Warner Brothers for, for several years until he decides he didn't want to do it because he has leverage because Spotify has given him and given us that opportunity to do that. And it's, hey, a, Brad. it's a fantastic thing. Yes, sir. Hey, Brad, this is Ricky Jean. Hey, uh, buddy. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask you about another another little twist to, to the idea of doing covers, covers, covers and then come back the next year with originals originals you know we had talked about once and we did it once you and you and i where we did we released two songs at one time and we called it 
the old fashioned 45 right a a side b side what about if you uh did a cover for the a side and the b side an original at the at the same time kind of i think that's a great idea The, the only the only question that i don't know the answer to and it's either one way or the other. I think it's, I think it's a great idea because the more you have out there, the more attention you get. So my only my only uh, pause in that because I don't know, I just don't know, is that are you creating confusion? Uh, would your cover overshadow your original because of the amount of popularity, and would your original never be seen? That's my only worry about it. Uh, and, and it may not be the case. It, it, it they may help each other. You know, it, it's possible. Um, but that would be my only worry that the cover would overshadow, and then the, the the original would just fall into the hole, and no one would see it. Well, I've I've uh, I ran into some people that are actually, um, you know, selling in their merch. They're selling forty fives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mean, exactly. And, and I that, love vinyl. Who doesn't like yeah. vinyl? And like and that? uh and uh so that would be wild Sorry. and crazy to have an A side B side, real forty five, and and one of your and an original song being on the B side. That would be kind of a a cool. Yeah, thing. I think it'd be. I mean, awesome. And of course, it's on tang- Spotify too. You know. Yeah, especially as a tangible product. And, and like I said, the only thing I would worry about if they came out at the same time would be with a cover, totally just knock the original into a hole. It may not. You know, I, I just don't know the answer to that. Okay. Um, but I like that idea. Uh, I really like that idea. Because, I, you know, you write a lot. You and I have co-written. I write every day. Sometimes I write too much. I'm so far, I'm 113 demos behind right now. So I'm, I'm in trouble, basically, with management and publishing um, because I'm so far behind. But the thing is, you can't turn that off. And, and I'd rather get an original out there. If the 45 gives us that avenue to do that, I think it's a great idea. That's an awesome idea. Um, I, Bobby, I wasn't sure what our time limit was here tonight. What, what do we, what's our situation here with that? Where are you, Bobby? In the meantime, what's your opinion of CDs? Well, see, you got to have something tangible on the road to sell. You have to. And, and I know this from working with John Jorgensen's band. He's got a bluegrass band that he travels with. He sells his CDs for $20 a piece. It's pretty high, right? But you're there to meet John. You're there to get his signature on the CD. And and sales just happen on impulse at those shows. CDs are pretty, pretty important, I think, still now uh, on the live format, you know, on, on, on shows and in person. I think they're actually still extremely vital. Um, And they're so small. My gosh, we got rid of vinyl records. We're going to get rid of CDs. You know, I know they're on their way out uh, and we'll be doing thumb drives from here on out, but I'm not real happy about that, but that's the way the business is. um, Can I ask a quick question, please? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I'm interested in um, having a private paid consultation. Are you available? Yeah, sure. I just uh, have to holler at Rochelle here at the office and just uh, she keeps track of the schedule. But yeah, okay. absolutely, absolutely. Good. I have a lot of questions that are pretty in depth, <laughs> and I don't want to, you know, hog the right. time here. Well, and, you know, and I've only gone through two pages of these eighteen pages. There's so much to talk about. Tell me about it. Yeah. There's there's so much to talk about. We talked about a little bit about getting our product together and doing releasing. Um, and Ricky Jean chimed in a minute ago. Very talented singer songwriter. You guys, a lot of you guys know guys and gals know of him. Um, and, 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 and basically a, a great songwriter, uh, and I've actually co-written with him. Uh, and I think even though as we're, we're good songwriters and we work hard to have great songs, to get someone to hear the originals, uh, we still need people to listen to them. And in order to do that, we've got an almost still fan base. In other words, when Chris Stapleton came out with Tennessee Whiskey, he could not get arrested uh, I remember talking to the uh, the label person. They said we couldn't get the guy arrested. We couldn't we couldn't paint him in a pink suit and light him on fire and get him arrested until we cut Tennessee whiskey. Now notice how different that cut is than George's. Totally different. And I think all the young people today don't even realize that was an old song. 
but it ended up being a song that put him on the map because it was a cover, because it had a large fan base, because it was well known. It basically did the job that they needed it to do was to get him on the map so people would listen to his original stuff. And that is hard to deny. There's no way of denying that. So it's something that we got to pay attention to. I don't like it either because I love right. But I just want to let you guys know that as you're working on your, your songs, there's a rule of three. And this I learned from Tony Brown at, at MCA Records when I, when I worked with Marty Stewart. And Tony Brown, um, you know, gave me some examples about this rule of three. And I thought, what are you talking about? So well, you got an example, a clear example. And this should be something you think about with your material. If you just do a guitar and a vocal, it's much simpler because you've got the guitar and vocal. If you do guitar, bass, and vocal, then you basically got three pieces within that mix, three pieces of identity or DNA within that song. And every song that you do, you're going to create your own sound. Guy Clark did this. All his records had a sound. Guy Clark wrote a lot of songs for a lot of different people. Bob Dylan did too. But basically he had a sound and that was his songwriter sound that would match the icon you would have on Spotify. If you follow me. So what you do is you, you, you pay attention to the rule of three. Every record label and executive pays attention to this rule. Vince Gill is a prime example of a clear example of the rule of three. We've got a band. We've got an identifiable instrument. And we've got a vocal. Vince, his guitar in the band. You really don't care who's in the band. You don't really care what they're doing. You just want it to sound great. So as a, as a team, the band sounds great. On top of that is his guitar, which he's known for, and then his vocal. Mark Knopfler, Dire Straits, same thing. Band, guitar, vocal. You really don't care who's in the band. You don't give a rat, as long as it sounds great and feels good. So it's the same thing. Female artists are, fall in slightly different category. Bonnie Raitt, obviously, if you're familiar with her, a blue, blues artist, she's obviously in that three. Band, guitar, vocal. Eric Clapton, same thing. Alan Jackson, a little different. Uh, George Strait, a little different. They basically don't play anything that uh, instrument-wise that basically stands out. They've got their vocal, they've got a band, and so they fall into a little bit different mix. There's not that identifiable instrument that, you know, it's basically an overall sound for those guys. Same thing with Carrie Underwood. There's no one instrument. You go, Carrie Underwood and that guitar player, fantastic. And the band, it's not set up that way. So they're a little different. Their metrics are a little different. But the rule of three has been extremely successful. And basically, it's just having a great rhythm section. Could be acoustic guitar, nothing else. Or acoustic guitar in a cajon or an upright bass or whatever would give you that rhythm. And basically, the vocal on top and everything really in the groove, solid, broadcast master. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It could be really, really, really simple. Is it but at... Mm -hmm. Quick question. Is it, is it necessary to have live musicians? I mean, are there programs like, I don't know, band? Well, I got to tell you, we use easy keys here at the studio. I do play piano because I I got my degree at Berkeley, so I've, I've taken piano. But I'm okay. I'm all right. If I lay it down, you darn sure bet I'm going to edit it and make it sound great. I'm not going to play something that sound good. But we use easy keys on Pro Tools, and basically it's 10 of the best piano players across the nation. And they played in this program like our drum program. And it's fabulous. Fabulous, I'm telling you. Amazing. There's there's a bass program that does the same thing. Guitars are not so great because they can't replicate the guitar sound, thank goodness. I'm still going to be okay. They're not going to take my job from me yet. But, yeah, there's a lot of programs. Do we use live players a lot? We have a, a great studio that we do live at. We cut a lot, a lot of live bands. But the best way to record that I found out with Tommy Shaw, Billy Bob Thornton, when I, when I co-produced for Billy, is we build a sound around the voice. And I should talk about this quickly because it means a lot to me and how I produce. And that's why we're so busy, I think. There's a lot of great producers out there and great players, just better than me. But, but I think what we do here is we, we're really concerned about quality and really concerned about making sure the artist stands out. In other words, if uh, somebody comes in to sing and they don't sing that well, what I'm going to do is I'm, what I'm going to do is try to find where their sweet spot is. I'm going to 
try to find out where they sound amazing and not try to mess up what they've been working on over these years. They bring in some songs and I'm not going to want them to totally change, but I'm, I'm going to really pay attention from a helicopter view on where do they sound the best. Um, Ray Price uh, lives right down the street from me here in Commerce uh, when he was alive in, in, in Mount Pleasant before he passed away. And he said, Brad, I've got a five octave range and you've never heard it. And I thought, well, why not? He said, because I figured out my sweet spot was right there and that's where I stayed. He said, I could have gone up here. I could have gone down, but I stayed right in the middle. And that's what made me successful. And that's important to think about. If you're not, well, I'm not a good singer. I'm not a great singer. Well, you need to record several things at home or in your studio and find out what one thing that you've got that maybe your friend says, that's the best you've ever sounded. Or you may think, man, I really sound great on that. You need to pay attention to what key that's in, pay attention to how the melody fits in your voice. And you need to always go back to that as home base. That's what we do here. We get an artist in and we basically, Ricky Jean, I'll use him as an example. He's got a certain sound on his voice. He's pretty much figured out how he wants to portray that when he's recording. My job is to make him sound like $9 million. How can I do that without messing him up? What can I do to make that sound even better than it sounds right now? Well, that's going to be using a great mic, a good mic pre and a software, obviously, but it's also going to, also going to help basically in, in arranging. Is the song too long? Do the, are things too elaborate? Do they need to be simpler? Do they need to be, uh, do they need to have a better flow dynamically? And occasionally when you'll record something, I'll, you know, why don't you try this to, to build this up here vocally and not, not stay where you're at. So, you know, things that basically you can suggest to people that will help just slightly improve things with just a tiny tweak. Very, very important. He's got his zone where he sings great at. I, on the other hand, as a session vocalist and a guitar player, play a lot of different instruments to keep the family fed. I have to sing low. I got to sing high. I got to sing a lot of different things in sessions. And that's a problem because I can sing a lot of different things. But when I'm as an artist, I have to get into that, my zone, like Bray would say, my sweet spot. Very difficult. So, because I can sing so many different things well. So, uh, so what I have to do is go back to square one. I have to go back to two or three songs that I've got in my repertoire of original and maybe one or two covers that people go like, label says, those are amazing. We love what you did there. And I have to go back and reference where those sweet spots are before I record. And I do that every time I record a new single or a record, I have to really reference that because you can actually get out of your zone. And if you're slightly less adapted session singing and vocal singing, and you have a very narrow range like Randy Travis, for example, Randy Travis is extremely identifiable. He would get kicked off the voice probably the second or third time he sang because his range is so narrow but it makes him identifiable. Just like Bob Dylan's, hey, you know, the way he sang on a lot of things, made him identifiable. Same thing about Stapleton's vocals. Obviously he's got an incredible range. He's not a country singer, he's a blues singer, but he's got a great range and, and he's got a, a sweet spot basically, which steps out of the normal range of a sweet spot because he's all over the place. So it's a little bit of a different animal there, but you got to figure out where do you sound your best? You don't have to be a great singer. You just got to sing in tune or take the software and tune it. Get it in tune. Just get a great sound. Get something that's going to really get people interested in the song. It's so important, you know, when that first guitar comes on or that first rhythm section, you know, is it simple enough to grab their attention? Is it too busy? We're not here to make the guitar player famous. We're here to make the vocalist famous. It's all about that vocal. So when we do demos. We don't use live musicians a lot at one time. And here's the reason why I've taken a long time to get to this question, this answer. Uh, as a session musician, we would come in to play on records every day, a 10, a two, and a six, Monday through Friday, 10, two, six, 10, two, six. You go in at 10, you get your charts, you're cutting for so-and-so, you know, a lot of different people. And I might be playing acoustic guitar or mandolin, or I might be playing electric guitar or upright bass, it just depends on what the session is. And what happens is everybody comes in, uh, the, the, the drummer may have had a fight with his wife that afternoon, the bass player had a flat that morning, 
so their energy's off. They're they're still pretty, you know, jovial guys, but you know, they haven't had such a great day, maybe. And maybe some of the guys, other guys have had a great day. So they come in and they want to play the best thing they play, but they really don't listen to the artist. They're a session musician. Okay, I got my chart here. And uh, great, what are we gonna do here? And they play you a tiny bit of the rough, just a tiny bit. Okay, great. Okay, I got it. Let's cut. That's it, guys. There's no rehearsal. It's like, are you ready? Are you in tune? Yeah, great. You're good. You're ready? Great. Okay, you take the first solo, you take the second solo, you fill in the third verse, and you cut that fast. I mean, there's no rehearsal at all. You read your chart, you play what you feel like is going to work there. That's the problem I have. There's a lot of great players out there, and they play great, great, great stuff. But it sounds like amazing cookie cutter music. When, when we cut here and other, our, uh, other producers produce in other towns, not just me, and they basically overdub the sessions, which they may have one live player or two live players, and then they overdub the other instruments. In other words, I play guitar, I'll come back and play bass and overdub, right? And I'll come back and play banjo or whatever the song requires. You basically can put that vocal. In other words, if somebody at the Dallas Songwriting Association sent me a rough on their phone, those are the things I love, something rough, very rough, and not, not polished because I can kind of get inside of the head of the artist and I can actually feel like, what does this guy really sound like? Where's his sweet spot? Is he hitting that sweet spot? Is the key right for this guy? Or should we bring it up a whole step or down a half step? That kind of thing. So what happens is I put that rough from the telephone into Pro Tools. I make sure it's lined up with a proper groove that makes that feel good. And then I track all my instruments to the original song idea because that's where the magic happens. I don't know about you guys, but if I don't record my song idea immediately on the cell phone, I'm going to lose it. It's going to be gone. I won't get it back. I won't get that cool thing that I had. And those that's the thing that I like to cut to. I like to cut every instrument to that pilot track I call. Guitar over here, you know, uh, electric guitar over here, bass in the bottom, maybe a drum track there for a little metronome. And I try to figure out what is going to make that vocal sound better, what's going to offend it, what's going to need to be taken away and trashed, what do we need to keep to make that vocal sound amazing? And that's all that matters. Anything else that offends how that vocal is going to sound once the artist comes in to cut a final vocal needs to go away. I don't care if it's the best guitar part I play, the best bass part I play. If it does not fit and makes that vocal sound amazing, it's in the trash. And that's the way we should all be cutting our, our, uh, our you know, if you have someone that comes into your studio and you say, this guy's great, he's going to play on my demo, and, he, and he's ripping, and you go like, that's really fantastic, but it's all about my vocal. It's my song. I'm the singer. I've got a melody and a story to tell. It's not about you on guitar. You need to play things that are going to support the vocal. So playing and overdubbing sessions with one piece at a time allows you to kind of look and reference back to that pilot vocal and go, is the bass player playing a proper thing for this? Uh, yeah, that's great. Now, if you cut live, you don't get the chance to do that. You basically have the artist come in, sing a scratch track. Everybody's cutting live right at that moment. And I may not play the best guitar part I've ever played. I may play something that's good and sounds great, but it's not really a fit for the vocal. And that's really, that's paramount mm -hmm. for me. And if it doesn't fit that vocal, we need to stop and go to the Waffle House. Get out of here. Brad, you know? Brad can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, you'd asked a little earlier about time and and I was answering you, but my mic was shut off. So anyhow, it's on, on, it's on now. And Harry, how many songs do we have to critique tonight? A couple, maybe. And so, kind of wind down in another 10 minutes, Brad. Yeah, sounds good. And, and, you know, guys, this has been great. I've been trying to go through this as quickly as possible. Uh, of, of the 18 <laughs> pages of notes, we're through page three so you you got an idea how much how, how <laughs> well, much there's to talk about here. i have a suggestion bob bobby's always looking for people to uh do what you're doing this evening and uh i'm learning a lot so come back well, in october 
Come back in October. I think we have an empty spot in October. <laughs> I'll, I'll get with them and we'll uh, we'll look on the schedule, see how things look. But it's we can get pages. Get pages yeah. four through eighteen. Then we'd love to have you back. That's well, I appreciate idea. it. I have an idea. We've only scratched the surface of all your wisdom and knowledge. Well, you know, and I've had some great coaches, and I, you know, and I'm learning daily, guys, about how things are changing <laughs> right now, and that's 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 made me excited again i mean i've been in the business a long time and been kind of jaded <laughs> worn out about things i gotta be quite honest but but uh i I'm, I'm actually excited about music now that i can own uh and i always owned my masters we always owned our masters but no one ever brought that subject up the masters had ownership and the labels would take those masters and hold on to them but they never were as important as they are today because of spotify and all the online stuff. So let's 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 do something real quick here because it's going to be important. Once you release, ah, on I have a question. I have a question. So, yeah. back in the old days, the 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 uh, labels own the masters. Yeah, right. And now, if, if you were, you know, if you control the recording and 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 everything, you own the masters and not the label. Oh. Right, and that's that's a big advantage for us. Big. Huge advantage. You couldn't do that. You couldn't do that back in the day. Well, let me tell you, I was just talking to a good friend of mine, Judy Mays. She worked with Pam Lewis out of PLA Media in Nashville. Very talented lady, very connected in the Texas scene, tied into the billboard charts here in Texas. And she told me, Zane Williams, you guys are probably familiar with Zane. Yeah, we like Zane. Okay. Zane is signed with a record label. And she said, Zane has really been having a hard time. And he just now made made a, an agreement with a software company where he can release his songs himself directly to the internet and make the money without the middle guy. Now, does this sound me funny me telling you guys this? We are all in that same position. I mean, I'm with a record label, but I basically own everything. My, my agreement with them, and I basically make the money directly without a middleman. Zane was with the label. Most people would say, I want to get a record label deal. No, you don't. They're the middle guys. They're the guys that basically take the money from the sell and say, you get a tiny piece of it. So Zane is trying to get out of that deal so he can sell like you and me to Spotify and iTunes and the list goes on. So you, you can kind of see from that, that we've got a great frontier. The frontier is brand new and it's wide open. Well, we that, that, you know? I've got it. So all this talk about how it's it's so sad that the record labels have gone and and the artists are suffering because they're no more, you know, the record labels aren't doing what they used to. But it, it's actually better now. Is that what you're saying? It's way better. I mean, the thing is, I can control everything I do and I can release anything I want to at any time without having a board of directors and ties look at me and go like <laughs> brad we don't really like that song and i'm thinking it's the best song i've written all year what do you guys talk about you know i'm thinking that doesn't go through my head you know, we just don't feel like it's got what it needs you know and i'm thinking what do these guys know you know they were ties they don't even, they don't even get in the studio very often you got all that to deal with and zane's been dealing with that but with this you know with this new situation he's going to be selling directly he'll get the money directly it won't go through a label and you think wow i thought that would have been the best way to go I don't think so. We got a great frontier ahead of us, and, and the situation that we got as far as independent artists is way more positive than ever. And I'm excited about it. I got to tell you guys. No, I've been, what, what, I've what's the time. advantage to these big stars have, having having a label? I mean, well, the, the labels are small, and basically, there's three. There's three labels, and they've all bought each other out, and there's conglomerates. I mean, you've got Beyonce on a master label, big label. You've got Stapleton on a big label. You got uh, Taylor Swift, Carrie Underwood, you know, just like basically what they do. This is how Joel Katz, the, the biggest attorney in the music industry, told me it, it happens. Casey Musgrave somehow gets something to his assistant. He gets a song and he goes, wow, this is pretty good. He does a little research on the girl, finds out, wow, Casey's really cute and she's young. So there's a lot of longevity in the career. And so what happens nowadays is they write a $4 million check, that right in the range of $4 million to start it. And Joel Katz will basically set up an LLC. Uh, and it, it might happen slightly different than that, but this is kind of a rough overview. 
set up an LLC. He'll take that $4 million. He'll have somebody in that LLC as a, uh, uh, basically a chief executive advisor with a team below that person. And they'll take Casey, put her into that situation. And that team will work that artist. And that team will work that artist to get the artist into a situation where they're, they're generating revenue. Most revenue is all generated through the master downloads, as you know now, and live performances. Live performances. Okay, so a lot of it's about artist development as opposed to just uh, promoting the music. Right. It's about, and basically it's a business deal. And Joel loves music. He's been doing it for years, but they'll spend that $4 million. And just like I had a cut on Tim McGraw's first record, and Tim told me he gave away 95% of himself. So the first seven years he's on the road, we're all seeing him on TV and radio. We're hearing him on radio and we're seeing him, you know, the bus going down the road on this shot and this TV shot. We're like, wow, he's, he's making, he's doing it. You know, he's really on top. And really he was eating out of a tuna can living in a one bedroom apartment, making $300 a week because all that money had to be paid back. It took seven years to do it. Yeah. And every, you know, he looks huge. He's on a bus. He's wearing nice clothes. He's doing big shows and making very little because all that money's got to be paid back for the investment. And and that's typically the way the way most of the deals are done. Big deals with Taylor Swift and all the you know her dad actually doing a bunch of money on that deal. But but they're made with a lot of money. It's four million and up. And so okay. anything below below that's independent. I got a question. Yeah. Just a quick question. I, I had a session in Nashville the way you described, exactly exactly how you described. I paid a producer for that session, three hour session. It was done at County Q. I've uh, done a lot of sessions here. Yeah, yeah, great great place. So, do I in fact own the master? You paid for it. It's your master. Okay, because I had yeah, an email that I paid the producer because I don't actually have a paid in full stamp from County Q. I have no, but you have your session files. Do you have your session yes. files from that? Okay. Yes. See, they're all dated. They're all dated and time stamped. And in a court of law, that's what's going to defend your master. Okay. Now, now that particular case has not happened yet. A defense case involving that. Right. But from talking to my attorney friends, that the, the time stamped on your pro tool sessions is what's going to defend your ownership. <laughs> Hey Brad, we got to, we have to kind of move on now. We've got these songs to pick. But what we do is we ask our guest speaker to sit in with our panel, Barbie McMillan and Joe Milton, and critique these two songs that we have. Are you willing to do that? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Well, I want to give you a big hand for your. Uh, Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank you, that. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was great. Thanks, guys. Oh, Appreciate right. that. Before, yeah. they, before I give, lose the opportunity, uh, would you be willing to come back first Thursday of October? That's the 8th of October. And, and Bobby, I'll, ha I'll have to send a message to Rochelle at, at okay. management and just double check and see. I don't know what's going on at uh, that time, but but we'll, we'll I mean, I'll look yeah. at it. I'll, if you'll send me an email, I will. Uh, I'll make sure she gets it and they can check on that. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll follow up with an email later. Okay, I, I don't, don't handle lose the your schedule. Dough. <laughs> right. Brad has a boss. <laughs> I do. The, the manager is the boss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Harry, it's time for you to take over and do these. Good songs. night, everybody. Thank you so much for putting this together. I got to buzz off here. Okay, Jerry Ellis. All right, I saw La Vista, baby. <laughs> You'll be back. Does yeah. Everybody, everybody see the cars? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I see cars. Okay. <laughs> I like those cars. That's what where year, I grew up. Yeah. What year Ford is that? That's a. Well, that was the that was about nineteen fifty one ish. Yeah. Let's say that's very early fifties. Yeah, very early fifties and. Everybody had a Ford or Chevrolet, you know. Hey, yeah. is, is Joe Milton with us tonight? No, Joe's no, not no, here. So Joe is not available, apparently. So we've got we've got Barb and we've got whoever, and, uh, and whoever wants to jump in. Brad. <laughs> yes. Okay. 
uh, it looks like well, we got uh, we got two songs here. We got. Uh, and, yeah, three. Well, that's that's not. I don't think we're gonna do that one. <clears throat> that one, okay. Let's see here. Which one do you want to do, uh, Alexis? The worst is, huh? I, I, the, I, I entered both of them, so. Okay. Go for it. Okay, well, let's get the lyric up here on uh, Lord, I Can See the Mountain. You've got shape notes. Anything you want to say about the shape notes? Uh, yeah, this was one of my first attempts at shape notes. I sing it every week, yeah. but... Um, let me get the song. Right I have now five shape note songs. We don't and, know what shape notes is, but um, it, it's just like a a staff. The notes. Uh, Lord, I can see the mountain. I feel the tremble. I'm so unworthy of you. Lord, I pray. Okay, Harry's we didn't have Get, Harry's getting ahead of himself. So <laughs> I, I wrote I wrote this one, um, and it is in the form of shape notes, which is just a staff. Um, each note has its own, you know, paso okay, log. Okay, so it's, it writes out the music as well as the melody, the lyric. Yeah, but the, each shape has its own name, paso la, you know, do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, then I I. I had someone else do like a choral singing on it for me for the parts. So that's not me singing. <laughs> uh, and and it, it's a little strange because I didn't realize how much of an accent he had. And um, also he tried to sing the high parts. So it, you're going to notice that. But other than that, I, I'm just having you listen to the, the arrangement and the melodic and that sort of thing. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I will attempt to scroll that manually as, as the music plays. So we'll, we'll see how that works. Well, it's going to be really hard, Harry. I think you probably actually need to put the lyrics up there in in addition or something because the the page goes back and forth because when you hit a... Um, well, do I have the lyric then? Yeah. Okay. If you have just the lyric, just put the lyric up. I can't read shape notes. <laughs> a lot of the okay. old quartets use shape notes for years. That's how they practice instead of charts. Yeah. They would use shape notes. Yeah. Yeah. Well. So you should have. Uh, the, I don't it, see it there. It's it's oh. in the, it's it's in the email. It's in the email. I I thought this is like real harmony, huh? Cool. Yeah. Hang on. We've never had one that had a harmony on it. Yeah, it's got four parts. <laughs> okay, this is the right one. Is the, the hand, these hands, is that the one? No, you're looking right now for, oh, Lord, I can see the mountain. And it should have been in the, we talked about it this afternoon. Where, where were you seeing that? Nope. I don't know. I thought we was going to use that one. I thought that's what we had decided. To well, do. I don't think um, you can put it up there, but it it's just. Well, I think we should just go ahead and use this one. If we can't see it, we can't see it. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Here we go. Okay, here comes the song. Can you lift me up to be there with you to dwell in your glory? Glory, glory, I stand in awe, oh Lord, of your shining love, and though I'm unworthy and can't do enough, Lord, just still give me all that I have, and each time I leave you, you take me back Though I walk the body of death That would take me That did not conquer you I pray you lead me through To be there with you To dwell in your glory Glory I stand in awe, oh Lord, of 
your shiny love And though I'm unworthy and can't do enough Lord, just still give me all that I have And each time I leave you, I stand in bed So much for shape notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty complicated. <laughs> hey, I love the song, but I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was to Probably better just to write, write out the lyrics. I have the lyrics in there. It's just it, that didn't end up on the page. So. Oh well. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you have them on your computer, Alexis? Mm-hmm. Why don't you just share them? with us on for your on your computer there we have them somewhere i have to go find it in the uh in the email well uh the uh, the uh, thing i but, figured but out you, this afternoon was that i but, couldn't but see. which which one of these emails is it going to be in now you sent me so many di different things that i'm I, uh you sent me well, one that had like three different uh that's not it well are, are these recent let me that's see the it. dates on these. let me see the dates on these here you okay. quit That's putting your finger doodle up there for a second. Let me see the date. Uh, it, I didn't send that to you today. I sent that to you last month. Oh, okay, so, down here. Which one? One of these? Uh, yeah, yeah. Lord, I can see the mountains. It's it's one of those two. I think it's the one. I think it's this top one. The top one. I think it's the top one because I sent it to you after I sent the now other that's, one. That's a wave file right there. Let's see if it's this one. It's the bottom one. It's one of these. Uh, one is the, uh, see if this is it. Is it one's Word? Probably the one I that's know. in the document. It's the, it's no, the Word. It's, oh, the, the one that's in Word. The one yeah. that says document there. On mm -hmm. Yeah, Word. <clears throat> yeah. There, there you is. go. Okay. So this is what I wrote in the first place, and then I sang it, and then I sent it to get somebody else to sing all the parts. Uh, I mean, I have people all around me that could sing all these parts, but I wanted to, to get it done. I didn't have time to mess with it. Can y'all see that? Mm -hmm. How long is your song? Uh, it's long. But our songs can be long. Uh, we what's, what what's the what would be the market for this song? Uh, obviously, it's it it could be pitched to some market, and I don't mean that to sound commercial. But you know, if you write something like this, you'd like maybe somebody to do it. Well, I actually I I go to church where we only sing shape note music. Right. 
Right. And so there are books that are like the the Sacred Harp. Or, right. Um, I can't Hem think basically a hymnal type that's got these songs in it that churches could sing. Right, but people buy this stuff. Mm -hmm. They buy these four part harmony things and absolutely go to concerts yeah. and that sort of thing. I don't, but I love to hear it. Um, but uh, yeah, I would love to have it. I would love to go in the studio and have, you know, me and three other people sing all the parts. Right. Instead of it being one guy singing all the parts because it loses something. Because actually, a lot about shape note singing is the unity of the voices. Right and the you know how they melt together and when you have one person doing all the parts you lose all of that yeah you do you lose a lot of energy and, and the one thing i mean if i could, someone else, i don't want to step in front of anybody else but um the low voice was natural mm -hmm. because it was it was his voice right and having one natural voice in there made the other voices sound ultra processed right like almost unnaturally processed uh -huh. And and also it made it hard to even understand the lyrics when he was really up in the high and you could tell it was synthesized. Uh -huh. um, I can hear the tuner on on the on the voices. And the one thing we do with tuners is we try to tune them to where they don't sound tuned. Mm -hmm. And you really have to know how to use a tuner to do that. It takes it takes a little bit of time, but it, it uh, I mean the melody is really cool. It, it, it would have been great to hear all natural voices and yes. not a process stack. That's my only, my only negative thing about it. It's like, dang it, that would have been so nice to hear, you know, just a real set of voices, you know, it'd be really cool. I agree. The words look great. Uh, okay, so I have a couple of things I might mention to you. All right. Um, I thought that all the parts sounded right, and and Brad is right on about, and we all know that that, you know, as far as being a good demo, it's too processed, and it needs to sound natural. So it'd be good to get some natural voices, but just looking at your lyric here, I would think that your verse one is your chorus, because of the lyric there. It's got the hook in it that has the title there, and it's right on top of it, and. I would use that as your chorus lyric. And then the other part, and then you've got a verse two. And then, so I would I would t try to use the verse one and then maybe take the chorus. And I don't know, I, I'd have to hear it again. To, I mean, it was so disjunct. I don't, I can't really tell you what the melodies are or whatever, but try to work the, your chorus uh lyric into your first verse i guess and and just start out with your use the first verse it starts out with a chorus then it comes in with the sec the first verse and then have a chorus the chorus again and then the second verse and then your bridge and then the last part is that a spoken part that is added later um the lord is my shepherd i shall not want Oh, okay. So it's a second bridge or an outro or thing. something. Yeah, Isn't it's an just, outro or yeah, it's an outro. Okay, yeah, okay. So that's a that's a whole different part. It's really hard for me to see the lyrics on here because my phone it's oh, so no. tiny. You tiny. can't see them. Can you? It's so tiny. So I'm sorry about but, that. But your 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 best lyric to be, uh, and and this is a great worship song because it is direct addressed to God. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't get any stronger than that as far as a good worship song. Mm -hmm. And um, I just really like the lyric of that first verse because it has the the hook in it at the beginning. And um, I think that ought to be your chorus words. And you, okay. you can switch it around. Yeah. Well, okay. Now, on the, on the shape notes, nobody says this is verse one. I okay. don't think. Okay. I'd have to go back and look at it. Uh huh. Uh, this was how I wrote it in my head. Okay. So know? then, so you may have mislabeled it here. So uh, do you yeah. repeat that uh, same uh, section again? Y yes. Okay. All right. So then you just need to call that your chorus. Okay. And uh, and I wouldn't. And then your other parts can be, you, you know, your verses. 
Okay. Uh, so I'd have, you know, the chorus, like you've got it started out with a chorus and then have a verse and then a chorus and then a verse. So you're saying where oh I have gosh. the first chorus is, is actually a verse. <laughs> yes, I would say that. Uh, but, you know, you have to have your, your verses, of course, have to have the same melody. Uh, and then your chorus needs to have a different melody. Yeah, you're going to make me crazy going back to finale oh. <laughs> <laughs> i have had it for less than a year and it it's not easy <laughs> you know what's easier and free is note flight note flight's way easier it's yeah. way easier yeah well except yeah. for does it do <clears throat> shape notes uh I, yeah i don't know if they have shape notes or not on note flight so i don't know but anyway, well, you've you've already got that part written down. It seems like you could just copy and paste it and put the different yeah, words under it or something. Yeah, hopefully it's that easy. Yeah. Make a copy of the file before you mess with it. <laughs> That's yes. <laughs> Famous last words. Good, good. Also, also in this, I mean, I'm kind of familiar with this because, uh, um, uh, gee, I'm trying to this. No, um, uh, the guy. Okay, I'm not going to be think of his name. Anyway, uh. There's a there's a shape note expert and he's not alive anymore, but uh, I knew him for quite a long time. His daughter married uh, a rock and roller, whoever the guitar player that blew his left ear out. He lives in Texas. He's a hunter, a really famous guitar player, rocker. And I can't remember his name right now, but he but he taught me a little bit about the shape notes. And the one thing I'm wondering about the arrangement is it's wide open vocals, wide open the whole time. There's no dynamic release. There's no dynamic lift. Everything is wide open. All the vocals are this boom, hitting you in the face. And, and it might be a nice idea on some of the stuff I've done for film, which involved acapella, is that there may be one vocal that takes a lead in a section and the other ones are, are stair steps slightly underneath to create a little bit of a dynamic impression to where it's not all barrels are at you, boom, the whole time. And it may it may allow for a little bit better digestion of the of the lyric because the lyrics definitely a good worship song, you know, to where the verse is not quite in your face, the chorus comes on with a lot more dynamics, and that could be done obviously with some real vocals, and it could be you know if you guys were singing on stage, you may have one person that's kind of the main person in that that melody line, everybody stacked underneath a fifth above or fifth below third right. above or you yeah. know and so you go like you're going to be louder you lean into the microphone and we'll go around you and we'll create this really cool mix we won't all come at you at the same velocity <laughs> you know and that would be my only other suggestion too is there's not any dynamic there's no dynamics with the way they're mixed and it may be just the engineer that did it yeah uh you know but because i want to be i want to have something pleasing i don't want to go like whoa you know, here we yeah. go again. Here's, here they well, go. when I got the finished piece yeah. back, you know, I mean, it, it <clears throat> took five minutes. I, he, it wasn't like he spent a lot of time. But when I got it back, I was like, whoa, that sounds so out of a can or something, you know. Uh, but it's what I had to work with. And yeah. to, I want to progress. I don't want to just keep waiting till everything's perfect. And uh, I mean, my life is about waiting till everything's perfect, you know. And it's like, it's time to move on. Um, I mean, you, you may want to cut... Cut, somebody may want to cut the melody with a click, some kind of a click. Yeah, and I then, and then, doing that. And then have somebody overdub the next part, and you produce that, and you make sure it's dead on, and then have somebody come in and overdub the next part, and you produce it and make sure it's dead on, and pay attention to these dynamic elements. Okay. You know, when you're singing, you can't. You can't do it. You just can't do it. You know, you right. need someone else to watch, but because it's a really neat song. Yeah. Next. Good. Good job. Good job. That's incredible, the shape note thing. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I've never quite seen that. I've, that, I've, is a, that is a pretty famous uh, thing about shape note singers, though. They, uh, they actually do sing full out they get in a room and they sing full out whether you sing good whether you don't sing good it's there's no volume control in these people and it's been going on for 200 years so uh, you know. okay are, are we ready for these hands i was kind of thinking well, about the beach boys let me let me make a suggestion if you're if you 
if you're thinking when you get ready to mix this uh, again, you might just look, listen to the soundtrack from Cold Mountain. Reference. Yeah, reference. as a reference, because yeah. Brad was talking about having a reference right, I like that when you're doing that. Themselves. So, yeah. I will. Um, I don't actually have that, but I... I'm sure it's on Spotify. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Everything <I'll take> is. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, okay. So these hands was recorded today in the bathroom. I like your bathroom. Brad ought to be really happy. I'm gonna get get this going, and then I'll I'll go back and I'll get the lyric. Your bathroom recording sound good. (laughs) What did you say, Barbie? I like your bathroom recordings. (laughs) <laughs> they, they have good reverb to them in the shower or whatever. Okay, here we go. Here comes the here comes the music. Don't Did forget to back it, it up. Back it. Yeah, I sure backed it back up. It up to the, okay. I, I backed it up already. You didn't do that before, I don't think. Weak and warm, they're always at my side. These tools, they serve me well, at least they've always tried. They've scrubbed and helped and loved and then folded up in prayer. Sometimes they look the chin of someone drowning in despair. Today, stuffed in my pockets, though bitter, angry hurt. Tomorrow they'll plant flowers and a tombstone with new dirt. Marks they wear, pain they feel, remind me where they've been. But raised in praise, anticipate they'll be restored in him. These hands are in his hands. God made them, he holds them. He's always guiding me. These hands were made to serve his plans. He'll lead them where he needs them. He's always guiding me. The ring upon the left is from the man I walk beside. God joined our hands as man and wife. To be one till we died Then blessed they held our babies tight Comforting each one Drying tears, quieting fears Their work is never done Their work is never done These hands to bed trembling at each funeral and when my children wed they play piano at the church and I know what God's done he's given me these hands to serve till the day he comes to take them home these hands are in his hands God made them, he holds them, he's always guiding me. These hands were made to serve his plans. He'll lead them where he needs them, he's always guiding me. Always, always guiding me. These 
cool tune. So you cut that in the bathroom on, how'd you cut it? Uh, well, I, I played it on my laptop, the track, the, the, uh, I think it was a WAV file. <clears throat> and then I sang it into my phone and I usually can get a better mix than that in the bathroom. But for some reason today, I don't know what was going on with me technologically today, but I was having an, I, I was not in the, um, um space <laughs> things were not working around me so that was the last time i was gonna do it i was tired <laughs> great melody i mean it's a great singing great melody the only the one thing that i would say about this song is it would make an incredible pilot for to cut to cut the song with you have all the pieces there Mm -hmm. That would go into Pro Tools, and then you would cut a clean piano. You would cut a clean set of drums <laughs> and, a, and a very pristine vocal because you've got a great map. This is an awesome road map. You know, as far as pitching it, it would be maybe a little iffy because of the quality, but but a great map because I mean, you're obviously a really good singer. I mean, your, your intonation is dead on. Uh, melody was, it was, it was nice, really nice. I mean, but I, you know, this would be how I would cut a rough. I would take my guitar, I'd go in the bathroom, I'd get my phone and cut it. And then I'd if, put it in Pro Tools. If only and then I could I, play the guitar, so. <laughs> well, I'm just saying piano is fantastic. You know, there's, I mean, that piano track would be great if it was super clean and nice and didn't have the distortion, you uh -huh. know, um, you know about all that. You already know, cause you know, cause way you cut it but um a great pilot to cut like the real track on so Fantastic. you're saying if i took that into your studio you would take it and go here's what i'm hearing and here's what we need to do with it and you've already got the elements there i mean basically you pretty much found the sweet spot for that song it's got a great melody it's got a great message you've got all the pieces for the arrangement my my thought would be to how can i create a better dynamic for the verse so it draws you in without changing much you know how could the, for the verse yeah you know because you want the verses to have a certain feel to them to where the chorus has got lift and mm -hmm. your voice does that your voice has that intensity and, and the music does and if it wasn't distorted it wasn't tough to to hear uh, it would you know I, I hear it done in my head i hear the whole thing finished i have a question you know, and it, it's a great song man love it thank you if you were to record it, would you start from scratch or would you use the parts that were already done by Alexis? And if, if, she had, if she had a clean piano or clean or MIDI, I would take that MIDI, put it in Pro Tools, and I would use one of the best sounding piano programs on the market. There's tons of them. And that piano would sound fat and lush and amazing. So, you know, if she's Bridget got the trouble water. Yeah, if she's got the MIDI, you know, for that, you could use that. You could really benefit from it. Uh, if those, if some of the tracks are real clean, you could use those. You know, you really could if you've got clean recordings of them. Because I'm, my reputation is such at stake when I deliver something and I put it out there. Or, you know, if, if I do something for Ricky Jean and he puts it out, if I don't make sure it's it's the best I can do, and it's, you know, no distortion, clean. It's, it's, my, yeah. it's my reputation. It really yeah. is. So. Mm -hmm. But what a great song, man. Thank you. You're a singing fool. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I mean that with all respect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've never been called that before. Well, that's what uh, the Fairfield Four, have you ever heard of them? Quartet called the Fairfield Four? They're four uh, black gentlemen that wear uh, overalls, string ties, and they press their <laughs> overalls and wear, they wear dinner shirts. Uh -huh. And they've been doing it since the late 40s. And that's that's what they would say. Say, you a singing fool. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Fairfield Four. Been around a long, 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 long time. Yeah, really great. Thanks a lot. So um, I have a couple of things to say. All um, right. So one is be sure that you, you, you your verses melodies are the same and not different. I think your verse yeah. one and two, your melodies. I'm really are a bit bad different. about that. I know. Barbie. 
that's, that's a good I'm, that's a good point that's yeah. why i'm reminding you of it because when you get to the sheet music you're going to hate yourself okay, except for so. i don't know how to shut it off in my head yeah when well, i'm you writing just, you just pick what's best you, uh you but know, you can you do hear, that because uh, you play the piano. Uh -huh. I don't play the instrument, so I only hear what's in my head. So what do I do about that? Well, you have to just pick the best of the best, you know, because you, you record you, you yourself you singing the first verse and repeat it. Yeah, just repeat the same melody. Yeah, you need you need to stick to uh, <laughs> just a few motifs. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. know so you don't want to have too too many for, uh, musical phrases. So can Stick I make to, that verse to a pre-chorus? Well, but you don't use it, it, it every time around, so it's not really a pre-chorus. Yeah, they repeat. Yeah. So yeah. Dang it. So um, and now, uh, <laughs> hmm, yeah, I know. Hmm. Um, so and then the other thing is. It's almost like you don't get to the chorus fast enough, but I understand right. why you've waited till after the second verse. Yeah. Um, but if you're if you're gonna wait till the after the second verse, then you definitely need to have a full chorus after the third verse before you get to the bridge. And then the the thing about the the chorus after the bridge, where you go back down to pianissimo and sing it an octave lower or whatever. I don't know if you're a whole octave lower. Uh -huh. I think you need to stay up there because yeah. the bridge builds the intensity of the song. And then it and just so, dies. Yeah. It drops. It you want to keep it. You want to let it grow there. So just see. maybe cut out that first chorus at the bottom and just go straight full tilt boogie into the last chorus. Yes. Well, you can repeat the chorus twice. Mm -hmm. but, uh, you just need to, it. the chorus needs to be exactly the same every time. Yeah. And, and you need to have that these hands, the way you built that first chorus up, that was perfect. Mm -hmm. The way you built it. I would take parts, if I were you, I would take parts of your first verse and your second verse because, and put them into one verse as far oh as pick, pick those that, lines. That's a good lines. idea. That's a great idea. Because oh the, the, the reason why I said I let that, go? then, okay, then if that confuses <laughs> you, then just pick the second verse melody because right. it was the better of the two melodies. The, the second two, verse melody was better? Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why is because it the last line led up to, the melody led up to the first line in your chorus. It's a dynamic flow right into it. Yeah. Right. So if you're going to pick one of those, pick, just stick with the second melody then. And, 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 um, well, I mean, I can try to rewrite it. I, I, I'm just going to have to let go of my babies, you well, know? You got to do that. You yeah. have to do that. And just let go of the melody of the, of the first <laughs> verse and, and use it. And, you know, I like where it has a core, a verse and a chorus and a verse and a chorus and a bridge and a chorus. I mean, you know, that is the proven, that's the uh, method. That's the method. structure. So uh, I don't. You may take too long to get to the course, but I don't know. I mean, All you right. have to just figure that out in the end. And, and you know what they always said. In, you know what they always said in Nashville is, "Don't, don't bore, bore us. us. Get, get to, the, to course. the chorus." Forest. Okay. <laughs> I've heard it said too many times. Yeah. <laughs> and you're so, sick of hearing it. Other, yeah. Otherwise, I mean, your rhyme schemes are perfect. Your melody yeah. is right. You just got too many mel melodic phrases. <laughs> and uh, your bridge is a little long, but I, yeah. I I read it and I couldn't figure out how to cut it back. You know, I would I, personally, I would cut it back to three lines if you could. But uh, it's huh. a five line thing. And it, and so that still works. Uh, it it uh, and this and it tells that part of the story. So. It's probably fine, you know. All right. Well, if I get if I give up some lines from li from verse one and two, and go with the second melody from the second the the melody from the second verse, and then add a chorus after the third, third verse. Third, right, right. And then just cut it down to one chorus at the end. That keeps it at a pretty decent time. Time. Okay keeps yeah. you moving uh-huh okay so take an inventory then you're saying verse chorus verse chorus bridge, bridge chorus, chorus and maybe repeat the chorus maybe or have a tag yay yep. <laughs> <laughs> and stick to one melody <laughs> right 
I, I have a quick, Brad, let him do it right. <laughs> I have a question. How, how did you develop your backing track? Where did that come from? Uh, I sing my, I sing my lyrics into the phone and then I'll find different people to, to do play with them. What do you mean? Find different people. You mean you had individuals play that backing track or is it? Yeah, no, not individuals. I had a person do it on their computer. So they probably got a clean copy of it. Maybe. I so, don't know. So you go. one person created it on their computer. Is that what you're yes. saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was a computer co yeah. created backing track. Yeah, it was a com okay. computer created back. That's that, one, I mean. that one was. Yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe I can get stems. I don't know. I, I, Sometimes I get stems. I don't know if I have them for that song. Or well, not. if you can get the individual tracks, you could throw them into GarageBand, mix it how you want to, get you a good uh, 48 mm -mm. one of these, mm -hmm. you know, and, and put down a really awesome sound and vocal because you sing great. You deserve this microphone. Well, I just bought a, the microphone Harry told me to get, and it's not that one. <laughs> well, 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 there's a lot of great ones out there. There's a lot of good ones out there. What did you uh, tell us to get, Harry? On the microphone? Yeah, on your Just listening. a USB mic. No, no. That's just for the open mic thing. That's not necessarily for recording, right? Yeah. It's for to oh. use at, at our open okay, mic. Okay, so I, I need an AT4040. That's, I mean, $288, and it, it sounds like a $1,000 microphone. Okay. Fantastic. Well, really, my son really keeps trying to get me to get a better one anyway, so I guess I'll... If you have that mic, you can use it for mm -hmm. everything, so... Cool. Well, I just got an, an Apollo X4, which has the Luna DAW. Right. And I'm slowly losing my mind, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just trying to jump in there and do it. Um, what you might what you might want to do, you guys might want to think about is when I, I teach at AM like one audio class for the semester in January through May, because I'm too uh -huh. busy to teach any others, but I do that so I can get interns. And what I do is we create with your software you're talking about right there, create a template. And that template, go online and figure out how to create the template for that. Every time you open a session to do a song. The same template comes up every single time and everything is exactly the way you had it the last time you cut and you get familiar with that. You start gaining some confidence and you get better and better and better at audio recording. If you'll use a template, that's the same one every time where the tracks are laid out the same reverbs, compressors, everything's laid out. If you do a fresh one every time you have to create from scratch. It's a lot of work. It is. Yeah. A lot of work. Well, sounds good. Maybe I'll sign up for your class next year. Well, guys, I've got to I don't want to be an call. intern. <laughs> I've, I've got to take a phone call. So I've, I've got to grab this phone call. But I want to say uh, how much fun I have had. It's been a lot blast. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brad. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. Brad. Thanks a bunch. See you, Brad. It's been a while. Yeah, man. Good to talk to you, Wayne. See you guys later. I'm going to try to see if I can get off of here. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank Thanks you. Lot, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, bow out now as well, and I do appreciate uh, appreciate y'all being here and and uh, having me. Thank you, Wayne. So, I guess Wayne. I guess the meeting is over just pretty much then. Huh? <laughs> well, without me, yeah, that, that <laughs> Wayne is just gonna be. I don't know what I do, but I learned a lot tonight. On your own, I guess. Hey, I, I want to throw something out. Uh, oh, Brad was the one that. Uh, sent me to distro kid you know five years ago and one of the things that he told me has come true and um you can actually put a song out in the morning and it'll be out on spotify that afternoon wow that's, uh -huh. how, that's how quick it, they're connected to spotify and the other thing uh -huh. that he said was if you uh you, you're gonna like the the ease of the how it works and uh and and it's it's very uh easy to work in fact the very first album i did we realized that i had uh, i named the album ricky gene right in duck creek station and that's what i named the album guess what 
that got so confusing. Amazon got so confused. Uh, so, because it was by Ricky Gene Ride and the album was Ricky Gene Ride and Duck Creek Station. So I went back to Distro Kid and said, I want to change the album cover and the name of an album auto released. Do you know what they said? Sure. What do you want to do? Wow. So I just, uh, I was able to send him a new picture and a new album name. And I named the album one of the, one of the songs, Folks Like Us Were Born to Sing. And boom, then, you know, a day they changed it. That's pretty and awesome. Then, Nothing happens that easy. <laughs> and and then they and then they sent it out to and it took uh, a couple of weeks i think for all of the other people to catch up with it like uh apple music and spotify and all those things but they are so it is so easy to work with and easy to correct a mistake if you make a mistake and i've heard nightmares from other people when they're talking mm. about trying oh, to do right. something like that you know Glad I stayed around for that, but I'm going to say good night now. Right. Right. Take care. Hey, Ricky, I got a question for you. Uh, are you still there? I am. Okay. So a while ago, I, uh, I I had already signed up for uh, Distro Kids. Uh, it's only nineteen dollars a month. I mean, a year. Mm -hmm. wow. So when he's telling us that uh, if you're on a label. If you had if you had that kind of support that you aren't going to make money in different ways and then over here on distro kids are you going to actually make that whole 0.04 from distro kids or do they, they take some of that they don't take anything really yeah no okay. they don't make money 19 dollars a year well, they also, you can also pay them for extra things. There's other things you can pay for, but the, but the, but the regular price for unlimited downloads is that 19, uh, you know, a year, a year, but there's some other things that I've paid for along the way. And, uh, one of them was, uh, if I wanted to have all of my songs continually uploaded to new channels that come available then there's a another thing you can you can pay for and that means you don't have to go back and and load them up like when TikTok came along and you know all those yeah all the other ones and but you can also click the box and choose where you want it to go and if you don't want it to go to a to one of the streaming channels you can leave that box unclicked and you can pick and choose where where you want it to go. And I've had talked to some people, and they say, "Well, I only want, you know, this, and I don't care about that." But in but I started off in the very beginning, just clicked them all, and said, "Let's see what happens." You know. Yeah. So did that work out? I th I think so. the 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 really the really thing that has helped me the most is to. I went to Spotify and started making my own playlist with my songs, like Brad was telling me to do. I would put cover songs and my songs in a uh, playlist. That playlist started to get to get played, and, and then they found my songs. But they don't find my songs just by my album being out there. It, I have to mix my stuff with cover songs. And now Brad's talked me into, you know, recording cover songs. And, uh, and that's what he's been doing. He's been all along this year, he's been uh, researching. So what's the best Valentine's song? What's the best? And he, boom, he he's doing cover songs. I was like being pulled through a knot hole backwards or kicking and screaming, telling him, I don't want to do cover songs. Oh, he, he, he keeps telling me. Well, in in today's world, where he was talking about the uh, master recordings, the cover song, you want to get known for a cover song, and then your original songs will trail along with that. So he he has friends way up into the music business that give him this advice. Uh, people at Sony and different places. So he's getting the straight scoop. 
and he's very generous to pass it on to us. We've heard some great inside mm-hmm. baseball tonight. Is it, it was uh, good tonight. Yeah. Uh, actually, I've met Joel Katz and uh, had dinner with him and a couple other people in New York uh, back in the 90s. I went to see his play. I didn't like it. Katz. <laughs> Can you tell that he drinks a lot of coffee, Brad? He just going. He goes like he goes that speed all the time. I think he was disappointed that he didn't get to give us his whole his whole spiel after he probably worked on it all. I'm, hey, I'm ready to hear the rest of yeah, it. Yeah, I want to hear it. Okay, he uh, can be a five-parter as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> one, one one comment uh, that goes without saying, actually, but. We have a really good recording here, and it's going to the whole thing. It will be on Facebook for anyone to see that yeah. wants to go back and watch this. Uh, a lot of people could really learn something from watching this video. Oh, yeah. yeah, a lot of people could benefit. It's going to be a high quality compared to, and yeah, it yeah. could turn a lot of people on to yeah. the Dallas Songwriters Association that we're not all nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, yeah. Ricky, you sing shape notes. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you do sing. I went. I went to singing school too. You did. I know. So we. I mean, maybe I need to pull you in as a bass. I don't know. Are you? I don't know if that. You know, I'm a. I'm a. Uh, I'm a. I'm a black sheep now, so they might not. Might not approve of me singing shape notes. <laughs> if it's on my recording, I get to do what I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, well, y'all, it, it was wonderful. Meeting. It was wonderful. Great meeting. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we uh, want to have this chit-chat, but, you know, if anybody wants to chit-chat, you're welcome to chit-chat. I've got a question for Ricky Jean. Ricky Jean, did you talk to your boss about playing Saturday? Not yet. Not yet? You're waiting for the right moment? She, well, she was She's doing the big banking business stuff, and she came home a while ago, and I was in here, so I haven't talked to her okay. yet. Okay, okay. Are we talking about Vicky? Yes, ma'am. How's she doing? <laughs> She's doing good. She's doing good. She's going to be grandma for number six in uh, about uh, uh, four weeks or three weeks. Grandma number seven in December. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> and, and I won't I'll think- be grandpa, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> I, I want to thank Bill Martin for showing up. You know, he he's a he's kind of. I've a, got seven. He's a board member. Have we given him a title yet or anything? Yeah. What is your, what is his title? To show up first where he gets a title. <laughs> well, he he went to yeah. Uh, yeah I was okay. only delinquent a couple of days ago, so I'm glad I'm not. He was at a board meeting, the what, a month ago. Well, no. What 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 do you want to do, Bill? I was, Are you a membership I, kind of guy? Didn't we already discuss how I was going to do the toilets and the bathrooms and stuff? Yeah, yeah, we got a lot of that problem going on. Well, given that we're in COVID state, virtual toilet. I live in Wiley, so if you're doing bathrooms tomorrow, I put me on the schedule. (laughs) Well, anyway, I I guess that's it. Hey, y'all come. We come Saturday. We're going to do the showcase twelve to two. I know Barb is going to play and. and Don's going to play, and uh, if need to, I'll play. And we've asked uh, Ricky Jean to play, so that's four thirty thirty minute sets. And we might get Bobby. He's got his he's got his new uh, his new focus right. Yeah, yeah. What's that? What's the focus right? That's, that's an just, audio interface. Digital oh. interface. He's, that's what you need to be getting, Michael. So you can you haven't yeah. been uh, tuning in on our Wednesday. Um, open mics oh I, I watch them on the lab. Facebook. lab well you can tune in and play oh hey, we can, i guess i guess we can me. i guess we could do it like a i get would you want to play some uh, bill on saturday i'm not sure but thanks for asking me we could do like uh we could do it we could do it like a just a what do you call it a circle of four or circle of five mm-hmm. something like that i've got a program planned she's got a, oh she's okay. got a program planned uh-oh. Okay. I've been I'm actually out of So you may, you may get uninvited. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay, well, we anyway. I'll take a rain check for... But we're you, gonna, know what, we're, you know what we can do, though, and what we should always do is allow at the end for an open mic kind of situation for people who want to join in later and 
and just uh, do a circle thing at the end. Do we get cut off for time? Well, we're good. we're set. We <laughs> the program is two hours now. Yeah. And we if we Did they shut us off after two. No one shuts anybody off. No. Okay. I can go. We can go like for eight hours, I think, with that. Really? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you could have an open mic then. We can't stay yeah, but, that long. But someone has to sit there for eight hours when you do that. <laughs> Harry doesn't want to do that. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, if y'all want to have an open Harry. mic, we can we can have an open mic. So I'll see y'all Saturday. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank, Thank you for you your help, Barbie. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. And happy Happy Fourth of July if we don't see you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye. Don't eat too many hot dogs. <laughs>